Hi guys. Getting set up. Got lots of stuff to do today. Lots of stuff. I got happy mail. I got art supplies. I got a bunch of markers out to test the, the books. We're going to make a magazine journal. It's going to be so much fun. If you're joining us for the first time, <laughs> um, my name is Dee Dee Willingham. And this is Coffee and Art in the Morning every Monday and Wednesday and the occasional Friday or whenever, uh, 9 a.m. Eastern. But I come on uh, at about 8.30 to say good morning to everybody, say what we're going to be doing, chit-chat. So if you don't want to chit-chat, just speed on by. Hi, Zeely. <laughs> Darla, Christy, uh, Miss Gigi, Teresa, um, anybody? <laughs> are those little penguins? Oh, no, those are little chickens, little peeps. Oh, Zeely, that's cute. Hi, Cindy. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of juice here, get my voice going. Get my voice going. <clears throat> I got hot coffee and cold juice. So one of them's going to get my voice going. <clears throat> so, yeah. Let's hope everybody's doing well. Everybody's staying healthy. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> Lindsay. I know. Kat, Cheshire. How's, our, how's everybody doing? <clears throat> Pamela, Annette. I know I'm probably missing people. The, the chat moves kind of in chunks. So are we clear? Does it look good? Does it look too bright? Does it look too dark? Y'all let me know. <laughs> Hi, D. Richie. Hi, let's make a mess. <laughs> uh, Rosa, Nashua. Uh, who else am I missing? Good morning, everybody. Hope you all had a good weekend. Hope um, hope everybody had, had a good weekend and is doing well. Hi, Pacola. So we got a lot. I left my picture up there just for a minute, just to test it out. <laughs> I probably will take it down. It's kind of big. I wanted it smaller, but I didn't see a way to make it smaller. There probably is a way, but I just, you know, added the little logo thing and that was the size it came up. So anyway, and I can't, I was thinking, I can I move it down here to the bottom, but I didn't figure out how to do that either. So, <laughs> but anyway, I have a, um, an order from Zandra that I got, I bought. And then Katie, um, Katie in Alabama sent me some journals. So I thought we would test these out. I pulled a whole bunch. Let's show you. I pulled a whole bunch of markers <laughs> to test them. So I thought maybe we could test some journals, but the main thing I want to do and I keep getting requests for this on Facebook, so I decided we'll go ahead and do it today. Everybody loves the uh, mini magazine art, you know, the mini magazine journal. So I thought I would make one today. I The only thing I prepped, hi, Andrew. Uh, hi, Janice. The only thing I prepped was cutting the magazines in half. <clears throat> And if you really want them perfect, you can see this is not perfect. I cut these myself with an X-Acto knife and a metal ruler. I don't recommend that. If you can go to like Staples or Office Max or whatever place that has, you know, printing and, and, and they'll cut them in half for you, I think, for $2. Um, so I would recommend going and have them cut in half uh, yourself. Uh, I mean, you have it done for you because it is kind of a pain to cut them and they don't turn out perfect. I don't care about that, but if you want them perfectly trimmed and matching up perfectly, you want to have them cut it for you. Also, it's safer. Uh, I'm going to put a cover on it. I've got them all cut over here on the side and I'll show you that in a little bit when we get to that and give you some tips if you do cut it yourself. Okay, it's kind of glary right here. Let's... Uh... There we go. That's better. Um, how to cut it yourself. But it's better if you can take it somewhere and have it cut for you. Hi, hey, Janet. So, yeah. So, I'm going to show my Xandra purchases, the journals that Katie sent me. They're all square, Janet. 
Janet, they're all square. <laughs> Me and Janet love our square journals. <laughs> so I'm going to show those. And then I did pull out some different markers and pens and things to test in them. Like on the back page, test and see what goes through. Because they're all different papers. They're all different papers in each one. Plus, I thought I might go ahead and I had already purchased uh, myself an Arteza, some of the Arteza ones. So I thought maybe I would test the Arteza while we're testing all these papers because they are different papers. So that in my um, in my uh, Zandra. Plus, I have I haven't shown this online yet because I just got it last week. I did post a picture of it. Look what Zandra sent me. She sent me one of her steampunk cats that she made. Thank you, Julie Topaz. Happy Marvelous Monday to you too. Yeah, I'm gonna enable like a freak today, Janet. Enable like a freak. Look at this. Look how it looks just like metal, and it's like I think she started with cardboard. Uh, chipboard rather chipboard and look at this look at this amazing steampunk cat it's just i love it so i did post a picture of it on twitter and instagram if you want to see it over there close up and zandra also has a video she has a two-part video on making it so if you want to see that it's on scraps to beauty scraps to beauty i know right julie Hi, Lizbeth. Anybody else I miss? Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Teresa. Um, I know I know I'm probably missing people coming in. So anyway, I did um I did want to do some testing in these, but again, the main thing I want to do is make a magazine journal, uh, probably maybe hopefully by the second hour. I might get started here in about five minutes, a couple minutes early. Of course, we have visitors. <laughs> you can't go past my hand, baby. You can't go over there where the cords are. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you can't go over there. Here, let me move this. You can sit. You can sit there for a minute. You want to sit here? So, uh, oh, that now that's got a glare. So anyway, um, I do uh, have some things to show. Let's see. Thank you, Pacola. There's a link to Scrap to Beauty. Oh, I got. I kind of remember to do this. I can put the put the little <laughs> banners up here. You can't directly link to them, but you can see them anyway. Uh, thank you, thank you, Pacola. So that's uh, that's Zandra's, and she streams every Sunday about four thirty in the afternoon on uh, Eastern Time on Sunday afternoons is when uh, Zandra streams. And uh, yeah, and so Janet, have you announced that? Or is it still on for you to have your guest? today janet i don't want to announce it if something's happened that i don't know about hi fritchy so hi tracy sandra in the room let me just type it okay lurk teresa lurk away <clears throat> so hopefully we are focused we have a clear clear uh camera thing is it too bright i don't know maybe we need to brighten it a little more i tried it it's hard for the streamer to tell it looks different to the streamer than it does to the to the person but i don't want to get it too flashed out i want to keep it you know the colors good so maybe let's see yeah now we'll see we'll, we'll work on it if it needs working um hi kathy b um who else you think so let me check twitter okay so janet's gonna check to see if uh janet streams at one after me <coughs> and uh and she's going to have a guest today or the plan is she's gonna have a guest but i don't want to announce it you know if uh, maybe she doesn't want to she maybe she just wants to surprise you guys so i'll wait but uh yeah so little Malibu is going to go ahead and take her nap now on the show. <laughs> I'm going to have to slide her over. I should have put my uh, collage tray up here so I could just move the tray. <laughs> Thank you, Pacola. Pacola's just like this on the links. So is she flashing out the camera? Are we good? <laughs> I know. I got two of them. This is the, this is the girl, Malibu, and she's a little tinier. 
and the boy, uh, but they're brother and sister. <clears throat> <coughs> they're brother and sister. No, you can't go over there, baby. And they like to go to the cords. So, yeah, we'll say good morning for a couple minutes, and then we'll uh, show the supplies I bought and the journals that Katie sent me. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, my voice, I've got to get my voice going. <coughs> I haven't talked since, you know, Hubster. No, no, you're trying to work your way over there. No, <laughs> you can't work your way over to the cords. You have to take your nap here. Oh, my gosh. Um, let's see. Uh, hello, RP. Who else am I missing? Nancy. I'm going to probably have to put her down on the floor. Uh, yeah, that's true, Suzanne. So, no, it's not the virus. I sleep with a fan in my face, and uh, so it, it, my voice uh, has a tendency to not be working first thing in the morning <laughs> because I sleep with a fan in my face. You got to, hey, it's Georgia, you know, it's hot, it's humid. Uh, let's see. Oh, is there problems going on? Okay, maybe I'm missing something. Yeah, thank you, Janet. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's keep it positive here. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else is going on? Um, we didn't do anything over the weekend. There was really no. It's so hot. It is so hot. Okay, so you're gonna get on down now. Okay. So I think I'll go ahead and start. I'll go ahead and start. Now, I'm going to move my little face here in a minute. I just wanted to test out putting a little banner up there. <laughs> because we can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and start by showing. I'm going to move this right here. I'll just move that there. Uh, I'm going to start by showing. Hi, Karina. Um, by showing what I got from Zandra. And uh, I did post a picture of it, so you might have seen a picture of it. This it goes with this uh, paper pad here. There's a paper pad under here. Let's put that back in the stack somewhere. Where is it? Oh, there it is. This goes in here. <clears throat> All right. So let me go ahead and show you these first. Xandra sent, she had a, a special if you ordered from her last week or as long as they lasted. She was going to send a deco foil sample out to you. I've not used this. And um, Janet was telling me about some different types of glue and stuff to talk. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Riri. Hi, Elaine. Anybody else I missed? So it's it's a, a foil that you put down glue and then you can put the foil over it and the foil releases onto the sticks to the glue, you know. And so I have not probably going to have time to test it today, but uh, this was included in my order. Thank you so much, Z. Sandra's always good about sending you a little something extra in your order. And her order ships so fast. Paint to Paint and Paper Studio. There's her little logo right there. Paint and Paper Studio. Zandra Scraps to Beauty on YouTube. And um, she, her, her, I mean, she gets her her uh, orders out just like that. So I put my uh, die cuts. I bought these die cuts that go with the one of the paper pads. And um, this one here. So it's Cosmos is the and it's Stamperia and these are eight by eight. Is it eight by yeah eight by eight paper pads, and um, so I got the I got two two of the eight by eight and one is the eight what is it A four I forget the uh, European number but it'll it'll be on there when I get to it. So this also you could purchase die cut. So I put them in a little tray here because um, I had to look at them. But I haven't used anything yet. I wanted to wait and show you guys, although that's hard to do sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to flip through this real quick. It's, um, it's it, you know, you got uh, prints on both sides. And it's it's a pale look. It, it's not, this isn't flashed out. This is pale. It's meant to be, it's not like bright, intense ink. It's pale. I wonder if it's the same idea as the colorful as we um, I don't know, um, Melinda, if it is or not. 
Um, <clears throat> let me move my little picture there. Let's see if I can get that off here. I just wanted to test it out. Let's see if I can. No, I don't want that. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> so I have a little more real estate to show stuff. There we go. Let me go back to my chat. There we go. It is gorgeous paper. And again, it's kind of it's kind of faint. I mean, it's not it's not real uh, intense ink. But look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Y'all know I love my space stuff. So yeah, I got uh, I got this. Oh, and also, I'm not going to tell you yet because I want it to be kind of a surprise. Uh, as soon as the show's over, look, I'm going to take all this apart. <laughs> I'm going to take it apart because y'all know I like to use my stuff. Uh, I do have a new project we're going to do on Wednesday. It's not a project I made up, but it's something that I saw on Instagram. And so we're going to do it. We're going to do it on Wednesday. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you what it is. But look at this. Isn't this awesome? I know, right? So I want to kind of go slow so it doesn't fuzz out on us. I hope it's not fuzzing. Uh, Picola, is it fuzzing out on us? Or are we good? Janet, does it look like it's staying kind of stable? I am on Chrome. I'm going to try Firefox. So I might try Firefox on Wednesday. But right now I'm on Chrome. And the color looks true to me on camera. I know, right? It is so me. I know I love it. So that is the papers. And I and I don't think Xandra has it in 12 by 12, but I know it does come in 12 by 12. A Stamperia. See it right there, Stamperia. I think they're an Australian company, if I'm not mistaken, if someone wants to correct me. Hi, Carrie Ann. I think it, thanks, Pacola. I think it's a uh, an Australia company an Australian company, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be mistaken. And uh, here is the name of the artist there, stamperia.com. And these are the die cuts. Candy said, record me because I will be in surgery. Oh, well, we'll hope you, everything goes well for you, Candy. Get, keep us posted. Stay healthy. I mean, stay, get well quick. Get well quick. Hi, Gail. Good morning. So I'm not going to go through all these, but I'll kind of put a handful up here just so you can kind of see. There's all the, and they're on light chipboard. They're light chipboard. Um, and there's little tags and little, little, little creatures, the owls. There's a little bird. There's a howling wolf. So I love the chipboards that match the, um, uh, match the uh what do you call it um uh, paper there's a couple of different planet type things y'all know i'm gonna love this see here's the phases of the moon there's a big feather just all kinds of little chipboard hi kenny i know i'm missing people that said hi gail uh davin d doodles hi that's a cool name. I don't know if I follow you. I'll have to go look for you later. I don't know. Um, your name doesn't seem familiar. There's a, like the moon, but just all kinds. And then there's one big wolf here, one big wolf in there. So it's a whole bunch of little chipboard pieces. And um, does it say how many? Doesn't think it says how many. Whoops. But uh, there's a lot. Oh, 66. 66 pieces. And uh, so I did bust those open and pour them in a bowl. <laughs> so that, there's that with that paper. Then the other papers that I got, let me show you the other pad here. Oh, I got two other pads. Okay, so, and they're all Stamperia. This one is Mechanical Sea World. Now, Xandra's probably shown most of these on her show and or used them in her journals. So, um this one is SeaWorld, and again, it's 8 by 8 and I'm going to do a flip so you can see them. Industrial Sea. It's like Industrial Steampunk, uh, Industrial Steampunk Under the Sea. 
And Xandra sent me the stamps that go with it. I think I think she sent me those for free. <laughs> she put them in there and she said it's something about not using them or something. So she sent them to me. So I have the matching stamps and I did stamp them out to test. So I'll show you them stamped out. So isn't this cool, guys? Look, did I miss a page? Yeah, I missed a page there. I think I no, I guess not. So isn't this very cool? So I will definitely be using these in my art journals. Maybe I'll use them in one of these new journals that Katie sent. Maybe I should do a theme, like use the whole stack in a, a journal and make it a, like a, make it a whole uh, steampunk underwater theme journal. Might do that. Look at that. Oops, looks good right now. So that is the Stamperia Sea World. And again, I got the stamps for this. Now I've stamped them out, and I am not, <laughs> I'm not precious with my stamps. You can see stays on and stays on, but I use them in different colors. Let me just take these off here so you can see them better. There, here's the here are the images. But I, sh I will show how they look stamped out. Let me get the journal here. Where is it? I stamped some out just on some different colors just to test. Um, <clears throat> so, see, I've stamped it out like three times with some different colors. So there's this one. There's this. This is just one stamp. It's just in, stamped out in different colors, right? Take me to the ocean. There's this little submarine. And then here they are in black. And then I stamped out this one. It's like a schematic. So there they are in black. I think that's all. I, how many I stamped out. I don't think I stamped. Oh, no, I did stamp them out again in some uh, blue. So just so you can see them in black, blue. Yeah, an awesome, a theme journal, Cindy. Yeah. So I might do that. So I know a lot of the girls do theme journals. I know Colleen does some theme journals. She plays along with, um, I know I always get the two girls' names wrong. I get Robin and the other, there's two girls that too. One does collage and one does uh, kits. And I always get their names mixed up. But anyway, Colleen does do journals from these kits that she buys. That Rosemary, thank you, Bacola. <laughs> Rosemary Morris um, has, sells kits by themes, and I know Colleen, I think she buys them all, and so uh, Colleen makes theme journals based off of Rosemary Morris's kits. I've never tried to make one. I, I, I think I bought one of her, I think I bought her Asian kit. I never made any specific thing with it, uh, but Rosemary does do, um, what do you call it, themed a month, a theme a month. And she'll do, uh, on her YouTube channel, she'll do uh, work in those journals. Hi, Christine, CL. So those are the stamps that I just stamped out just to test. I stamped them out in, with some oxides in blue and then stays on in black, which, you know, that's going to stay in your stamps, but it doesn't, I don't, I don't care as long as they keep working. Now, if you use any kind of acrylic paints with your stamps, you do need to wash them off. Whether it's a foam stamp or a regular, whatever kind, these are uh, foam mounted. So they're already been foam mounted. And, um, but you will need to clean them if you use acrylic because acrylic will, um, will ruin your, they'll, you know, they'll get encrusted with paint. So if you decide to use any of that. Hi, Erica. All right. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And then the next um, pad I got, and I got this one because I bought some more. Now, I did, I had bought a few of these papers before. I didn't pull them out to show you, but I did buy two more of the, um, their Stamperia, their decoupage, um, you know, collage or decoupage. They're like tissue paper thin. They're like tissue paper thin. So they're going to go down like butter. And uh, so I did buy these two. I, I'd already bought, I think, this one. Maybe I bought both of them. They're in my in my paper. Um, but I bought these two again because I bought the Coordinating Oriental Garden Stamperia 8x8 pad. So this is all the stuff that I bought from Zandra and her shop, Paint and Paper Studio. 
Um, just clean it so you don't have to be nervous for your stamps. <laughs> Janet. Janet's, Janet's real picky about her stamps and stencils. I don't clean my stencils either. So, yeah. <laughs> they get crusted over. So. <laughs> so you can see this one and how beautiful it is. And you can make little tags. You can make ATCs. They make beautiful backgrounds on ATCs or art cards. Or, you know, like I said, in your journals. And, you know, I have three different, I have, well, actually I have four because I have another paper pad. But these are the eight by eight ones that I can make into journals with. Because they are so pretty. Look at them. And again, they're pale. They're not, it, if you're seeing it, it looks kind of flashed out. It's really not, it is pale like that. They're not like heavy saturated inks. Their, their Stamperia does their uh, papers a little more, do I want to say muted? But yeah. So they're just, it's beautiful. So I got that and these two as the accessory for that. Then I got uh, this paper stack. And here's the papers that Xandra had everything. She always has everything wrapped up. Look at this. Look at the kitty mermaids. I'm going to have to cut some of those out and put them in the fibs journal or in one of my other. <laughs> I got to get back in my fibs journal. Every time I see something like this, I say, I got to work in my fibs journal. And, uh, and this tissue paper here with the swatches. So I love these. I'll, I'll use those <laughs> in the fins. Um, so this one is, this one's not, this is Co Leonardo Codex, Leonardo Codex. And this is Chow Bella, paper crafting, creative pad. And I think this is the only one I've ever seen. And again, you know, if some of these might be from Australia, this has got that unusual, is it, what's it called? Is it A4? I forget. Um, yeah, A4. So you go, European girls will know what size that is. In inches, it is eight, almost eight and a half, just shy of eight and a half by <laughs> 11 and three quarters. So it's A4 size. And I don't know if this is made in Australia, like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the uh, Stamperia is too. So I'm going to flip through these. Again, y'all know I love my Leonardo da Vinci. If I could be any artist in history, it would be Leonardo. <laughs> People ask you, what if you could be any artist in the past? And one of the reasons that I like Leonardo is because he was interested in so many things. And I love to study. I love to research. I love to look into mysteries and all that. So I, that's what draws me to Leonardo. Uh, you know, I've actually seen at the museum, um, they had a traveling exhibition. And I actually got to see one of Leonardo's journals. And they're little. I mean, the one we saw is like about this size. They're very tiny. You think when you see them online, now I don't know that all of them are. I don't know that all of his journals were little, but this one was little. And it was like, oh my gosh, he writes so little. And, you know, it was, it's, uh, it was really something to see in person. So again, just little Leonardo images and, uh, I did have a couple of uh, books that I got on clearance ab about Leonardo, the his like paintings and biography and stuff. And I bought a couple of them to cut up. So I used to use a lot of Leonardo imagery from uh, books and magazines in my art journaling, but I haven't done it lately. So this may get me back into Leonardo. And y'all know um, Mona Lisa is my muse. So I do have a I do have a picture of Mona Lisa on my wall and a big poster behind the door. <laughs> I told you this. <clears throat> I bought a big like I mean, you know, one of those big posters like I don't know what size it is. 20 I don't know, 24 by 48. It's a huge poster behind your door. It's the size of your back of your door. And I put it on the back of my door. <laughs> In my art room, and I closed the door one day, and I glanced up and made me jump because I was not expecting to see a full-size person on the back. 
to her. Looked like somebody was walking in the door. Now I'm used to her being there. But and then I got a couple stencils. She sent me this one as a as let me get a piece of the dark paper here so you can see it. She sent me this one, and it's probably backwards. Here we go. It goes this way. So she sent me this one. So I'm really and I and I did order. I haven't got it yet. I did. I did. Uh, email the company, the foamies, you know, Patty Tolly Parish um, had some new foamies and I thought I'd have them by now. So I email them and they email me back. So we'll check tomorrow. This was yesterday. So they said, we'll check tomorrow. So I'm going to check today on my foamies, but to uh, Patty Tolly Parish has some, uh, uh, just some kind of, I don't know, that kind of just looks like designs like this. Uh, it's, I don't, it's not any writing, it's not any language, but I like the designs of Patty's foamies. So when those come in, we'll probably use this and, and Patty's foamies in a project. And then I got this one because this just looks like uh, splots. You know, I love me some splots. I know, right? So I got this one. This is mixed media. And this goes with the mechanical Sea World one, the Stamperia one. And it's by Antonius, this guy right here. Um, a Greek artist, I, I think, I'm pretty sure he's Greek. Yeah, I think that's a Greek name. And he does, he's kind of like Tim Holtz, except more art journal -y type, I think. I've not seen any of his classes. I think Eileen signed up for two of his online classes. So anxious to hear about that whenever she um, takes those classes. And um, yeah, mine haven't either, uh, Tamari. Tamari. So, um, uh, let's see. So anyway, uh, I'm anxious to see, you can look him up. I don't know if he has a YouTube channel or just a website, but he does, you know, um, real grungy type of art kind of, I don't know if he's, if it's like, if I could compare it to anything. Well, I, I won't compare it. And then I got this one. It's a grunge and, uh, I like this. I did test this out. Did I put it in this journal? Let me see. Mm -hmm. I tested a couple of these out in this journal. Let's see. Yeah, here. I used distressed inks and did a little um, little test with the distress inks here. I can't, did I say hi to you, Kathy A? I think I said hi to Kathy B. I don't know if I said hi to you, Kathy A. And hi, APG Jamie. Anybody else I missed? So I did a little test here and I put that I used distress inks on it. So that's this stencil here with uh, uh, two or three different inks that I, let's see, where's the spongy thing I use? Where is it? This was some of these kind of sponges that you, they're real soft and uh, just kind of blended them in. So. So did that, and let's see, did I test it? I don't think I tested any of the other ones out. No, that was the only one I tested. But I really I really liked that, that stencil. And then I got this one. This is Forest, and again, it's a Stamperia, and it's a, it's like a close-up of a leaf. Like if you, if you did a macro leaf photography, that's what this looks like, a macro leaf. So those are the stencils that I got. And again, Zandra, so surprised that she sent me this. She sent me one of her steampunk cats. And again, I did show it on uh, Instagram and Twitter. So if you want to see it close up there, but look at it. Isn't it stunning, guys? I cannot believe she sent me this. It was the last thing I opened. So it, it, it was just such a surprise when I opened it because I had no idea she made this for me. And again, if you want to see her make this, she has a two-part YouTube channel, which I have since watched. I hadn't watched it by the time when this uh, when she made this, but I went back and watched it. It's a two-part on how she made the steampunk cat. So if you want to see her make that, go to Scraps to Beauty by Zandra. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> little mouse right there, little paw print. There's just so much detail in it. <laughs> so thank you again Z I know isn't it hi Carolyn it's just so I love it I love it so let me move some of this off the table here and you hear my squeaky chair my chair is 
25 years old and it's so comfortable. I, it fits my butt, so I don't care if it squeaks. But just so if you hear that, it is squeaky. Um, all right, let me put this here until we get done with that. Um, let's see. I have been taking, whoops, fix this. Hang on, guys, got to make a space. I have been writing lots of notes. This is my current note taking journal that I've been writing all kinds of notes and, and color charts and just ideas in here. It's getting quite full. So, um, yeah, so I've got lots of ideas, including we're going to do a new project on Wednesday. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's a new project. This is stacked up. I have no room to put this stuff. I have a table right behind this table. And uh, it's a four-foot table. This one's a six-foot. And then I have another four-foot table sideways to me. So I actually have eight feet right here. But this right here that you see, <laughs> it's, this is about all the space I have to work on. Okay, so then I got, um, I got these journals. Katie, and this one goes with this. Katie sent me four journals. And she said, I have something else coming from Amazon today. But I don't know if it'll get here before the end of the show. If, if it doesn't, I'll show whatever it is on Wednesday. She didn't tell me what it was. So um, thank you so much, uh, Katie in Alabama, for sending me these journals. I have not ever used any of these. But I thought I would test them. So I did pull pins, markers. I pulled everything purple. So I pulled a bunch of purple markers, pins, Pens, a couple pencils and some things to test them with. So I thought, I don't know if we'll have time for doing this today. Maybe on Wednesday we could test. But I did pull, maybe we'll do just one or two, just so you can just see what I'm talking about testing. We'll test in this big one. So I pulled, uh, I want to show you these journals. And this one is a, a Ohuhu marker pad pencil uh, pad. And look at, the, look at the texture on that. It looks like shimmery. Let's see. Look, it has a shimmer to it. And y'all know we, me and Jan love our square journals. <laughs> but anyway, um, this came with it, the little Ohuhu marker pad. It's a sketchbook. They're calling it a pad. It comes in two sizes here, a little brochure. And it's for using your Ohuhu markers. Now, I don't have Ohuhu. I have Hoo Hero. Now, I don't know if these are made by the same company, the Hoo Heroes or the Ohuhu. I don't know if anybody knows if they're made by the same company or not. I don't know. Um, but anyway, if that's the case, then I'm wondering if they mean that the alcohol markers will not go through. Hi, G. Hi, Molly. Jill. I said hi to Carrie Ann. I know I'm missing people. But anyway, uh, this little brochure came with it. And um, so I thought we would at least test. I don't know if this that means that alcohol markers don't go through. I don't know. So we're going to test. Then she sent, and oh, let me show you a little bit of the paper and stuff real quick. And uh, this paper is perforated. So it's really, it's got perforations going down it here. And this is the little brochure fell out. There's a little sample on the back. Um, it's very slick. It's very, it's like Bristol. This feels like Bristol. It, each one feels a little different. This one feels like Bristol. Oh, good. Keep an idea, uh, uh, a uh, Society of Idea Collector notebook. Gaga, good. So it's eight, it's uh, eight and a half. Uh, is it eight, eight by eight? What is it? Eight, eight point three by eight point three. And uh, so this paper is very slick. It is perforated. So if you do something on there you like or don't like, you can just perforate it and tear it out. And uh, it's very smooth. It's got, it's 120 pound or 200 gram and eight, eight and three, eight point three by eight point three. So um, that's this one. Then these, I've never tried these either. I've never tried the Handbook Journal Company or the Elo Sketchbook. Uh, I've never tried. I don't know if y'all have tried these. And I did pull out one of my Artezas. Uh, I had bought three of these a while back and uh, this size, and I've, you, I filled one up. <laughs> I'm not completely finished with every project in it, but where is the page? <laughs> 
So this is the one I've been working in. And uh, you can see it's got all kinds of starts and different things in this one. And uh, I, f I have flipped through this a few times, so I'm not going to do it right now. But what I wanted to do is when I'm testing the pens in these that I thought I would do it in the Arteza as well. So the handbook one, this one is a cream color and it feels like, um, it feels like kind of like uh, a sketch paper, not quite watercolor. It's not that textured, but it has a tooth to it. Probably be really good with pencil uh, and it is a cream color and it feels the same on both sides as does the uh, oh, who, who, what? It feels the same on both sides. Sometimes they feel like, let me test the Arteza one. I don't remember. It feels the same on both. Yeah, the Arteza one has a smooth side and a rough side. So this feels, um, I wouldn't call it feeling like watercolor paper, but this is kind of close to watercolor paper. It's thick and one side is more textured than the other in the Arteza. And then the little ELO one, this is four and a half by four and a half. And it is white paper, although is it is that cream? The in, in this is kind of throwing me off for white, but it is white. And it feels like um, it feels like 110 weight cardstock, kind of maybe 90, 90 weight cardstock. It kind of has the feel of a white cardstock. I'm trying to kind of describe it by something you might, you know, be familiar with. That's what this feels like. This feels like a 90 weight card stock. So that's the little ELO. And again, we're going to test them. Maybe we'll have time. We'll see if I can squeeze that in. This one, I don't know what company makes it. I look for the, it, they all came wrapped in plastic, which I took off and threw away. Uh, but this did not have a, a name or a cover. This paper looks a little gray. It's an Asian, like Japanese cloth covered, cloth covered um, uh, journal. And it has like a gray paper and it's toothier. This is much toothier and, and it feels a little more porous. Uh, Jill says, I have the Ohuhu markers. I like them similar to Cali Art. Yeah, I've never used the Cali Art. I have the Huhu Hero ones. Uh, now, if you want to see some different... Um, things on the different markers and crafting with Anne. She has two channels uh, crafting with Anne. And what's the other one? Color, not color and chat with coloring with Anne. Um, Mom and Denise are texting. So I'm going to hear dings. And um, so this feels a little textury and it feels like it might be a little more porous. So what I wanted to do was test different markers. I thought I would just open them all up. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. After we do that, the other project we're going to do today is we're going to make us a magazine journal. I keep getting requests on Facebook for me to make another one of these. This one, I don't know, was about four, four or five years old. I'm not sure how old this one is. But we started making magazine journals out of large magazines just glued together. And this one is magazines that are cut in half. So I'm going to show you how to do it, although I recommend going to office max staples or whatever and having them cut the magazines in half for you on their big machines maybe a ups store might do it but you can do it yourself with an exacto knife and a metal ruler but you gotta be very careful and it's time consuming it does take a while especially if you do multiple magazines which i did three so i won't show you them yet but let me just show you i have three here ready to to i only cut them in half i haven't done anything else i haven't glued them i haven't done anything else with them so i'm going to show you how to do that how to make another one of these and we'll do a little flip all right so let's go ahead and do a quick little um let's do a quick uh, the camera's a little crooked here those lines bug me when they're not straight let's do a little test with these different um uh journals so again i don't know who makes this one it will just came it was cloth covered japanese uh, motif on it so i'm going to go to the back and this one has a little pocket too i'm going to go to the back and this is a different paper the fly leaf is a different paper than this so i'm going to go to the pay the last page that is the same paper oh and it also has a pin loop up here or a pencil loop it has a little pin loop at the top there and I guess you could use the journal this way as well, you know, going this way if you want to and have a little pen or pencil in your pen loop and you can work in it, you know, work in it uh, vertically like this. 
So, but anyway, all right. So I'm going to open up each book to the page that we can test. So there's that one. There's the ELO one, which has cream color paper. This feels, this feels, this paper feels like a Moaskina, kind of. Um, it feels almost a little just, and I'm just going by feel, <laughs> feels just a tiny bit slicker than a Moaskina. But it has the cream color, if you can see the difference. This has a gray. This is kind of a cream color. Then I'm going to go ahead and throw the Arteza in here as a sample as well. The Arteza comes with a little plastic pocket in the back. I'm trying to leave the things on here so you can see them when we flip back. So I'm going to go to the back page here. Now this, this has a textured side and a smooth side. So it, like these are facing each other. So these are both smooth and then these are both rough. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the smooth side to test it. Um, all right, so let's put that at the top. So Katie sent all sent me these four right here. Okay, then this one's called Handbook Journal Company. Again, I've not used this. It's they're calling it a drawing. 128 acid-free pages. I've seen people use this online. It's a five and a half by no five and a half five and a half by yeah five and a half by five and a half. And it has 128 acid-free pages. So again, I'm going to go to the back. This has a little pocket like the Arteza does. And I'm going to go to this page. And I, again, I'll try to, I'm going to feel them. This one has a little bit more texture than the others. It's not quite, it's just a little bit slightly textured. And it has cream color pages. Then the fifth one is the Ohuhu and it you know it came with this little brochure on Ohuhu marker pads. They're calling this a pad. I you know I call it a sketchbook, but they're calling it a pad. And it comes in two sizes. Um, gives a little bit of the about the markers, about the pads, how to tear out a page if you want. Has a little unicorn on the back sample using the markers now again i don't have oh hoo -hoo, but i'm thinking that any alcohol markers are similar enough to test on a pad so i'm going to go to the back page here this paper this book has a pocket in the back it is perforated pages and this feels like 110 weight card stock a little heavier and it's smooth or or it's Bristol smooth, but the weight is probably about, I don't know, does it have a GSM on it or something? Let's see. 120 pound. Okay, it's called, they're saying it's 120 pound. Feels, you know, closest that I can say comparable would be like 110 pound card stock. And it's white. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to write at the top real quick the name of each one so we can you can see um and then i'll try to do a little uh, notation of the markers that we use now i've got probably 20 25 markers and pins out i don't know that we're going to test all of those if y'all have any questions put it in caps remember guys i won't think you're yelling at me put it in caps okay so let's go ahead and bring everything down as much as we can and this one again is the oh hoo hoo Okay, and this is this right here is just a food a touch pen. So what I'll do is I'll just write, I'll just write food a touch. I'll just write food a. So I'm going to write everything with my sharpie pen. It's a sharpie pen, not a sharpie marker. I did pull a sharpie marker to test as well, and I pulled everything in purples. <laughs> Bye, Jill. Thank you. Okay, have a good day. <clears throat> All right, Pacola. Speaking of, let me have a sip of my coffee before it goes cold. Okay, then this one is the Handbook Journal Co. I'm not writing my best, but I just want to test. Okay, then this one is the Arteza. Is it 
I always want to put two E's, but there's only one. And I still don't know if it's our, everybody that has different. It's either Arteza or Arteza. But um, yeah, so. Um, okay, then this one is, I'm just going to put, um, I'll just put Japanese. Because I'm not sure uh, what, I'm going by the design on the front. Japanese design. I'll just put that. And I can see that this is much more absorbent and it's a little harder to use the pen because this is more textured. And then this one's the ELO sketchbook. This one, the pen is like butter on here. So if you like to write, this one is the smoothest so far. I mean, it's very obviously smooth. Yeah, a couple of the others were pretty smooth, but this one is very smooth. Okay, very smooth. Okay, so again, I'm going to write Fude next to it. This is the roughest one, which I expected. It's it's very textury. It, I, and I got, thought we'd test just a quick little swatch of watercolor, too. Okay, this is the food pen. I just want to write what kind of pen I wrote with. Is this interesting or is this helpful? So you can see some different <laughs> journals. Uh, so, okay. So now... Let's put that away. We tested the food. Eh? All right. So now I am just going to test a pencil. Okay. I'm just going to see what it feels like with a pencil. So here's the, um, the handbook journal. You know, hoo -hoo. This feels just like cardstock. This feels like your um, 110 weight office cardstock is what it feels like. We'll see what happens. This is the Arteza, Arteza little bit of tooth, the Japanese one, a lot of tooth, the ELO, no tooth. There's no tooth on this. So I'm not sure if you would like to do pencil on this um, because, and again, I'm, I'm really not trying to shade. I just want to do a quick test, but this is just a, this is just a number two pencil. Okay. And I'm just kind of, this one has a little more texture. If I was going to use a pencil in any of them, I'm liking this handbook journal. It's a cream color, and the pencil is feeling really good on that. I don't do a lot of sketching with pencil. Y'all know I do a lot of Bic pen sketching, which I did not. Where's my Bic pen? I think I pulled every pen but my Bic pen here. All right, let's move this. I won't write pencil because that's obvious. Let me find a Bic pen here. Hang on. Let me find one. Uh, let's see. I got some up here. Just want a plain big pen. Okay. All right. Let's get one started. This might be a new one. There we go. All right. So now this is just, oh, that's real smooth on the Arteza. This is just a big, the Japanese one. It's, it's, uh, this one is picking, making the pen pull, it pulls the pen ink a little. Can y'all see anything? Is this helpful? It may be kind of far. I'll show each one up close. All right, the ELO is like butter. It's very slick with the Bic. The handbook journal, it has a little bit of texture. The hoo-hoo, again, this feels like working on cardstock. I'm anxious to test the markers on some of these. Okay, all right, let's move that all the way. Now, let's see, let's just test the, um, let's test the um, Crayola Super Tips. Crayola Super Tips, and I thought I'd try two colors just to see if it kind of did any kind of blending at all. Uh, let's see. So on the Arteza, here's the dark, and I also want to see if it goes through. Okay, so that is, let me get my pen at the ready. This is the Super Tip. Okay, this is the Japanese one. Let's do the dark one first. Okay, this one, because it's textured, you can really see the pin marks. Again, I'll hold all these up for you so you can see them. 
Okay, thanks, Christine. Yeah, I know you can't see the details. I'll, sh I'll show that in a minute. I can't really do both. <laughs> okay, so then here is the, um, the ELO. Again, oh, I did the dark light one first. I got the lids on the wrong one. Let's see if they kind of blend. They blend a little bit on there. Let's move the colors to the right cap. Okay, so this is the super tip. Again, this, this is so easy to write on. This ELO is really nice to write. It's so slick. I mean, the pen really glides on this one. Okay, the handbook journal company. This one has a little texture. So this is, again, the super tip. And then in the Ohuhu, and I'm going to, let's see if any of this went through. Okay, so this is the Ohuhu. And again, these are water-based. The super tips are water-based. Okay, super tips. All right, let's see if any of these went through. Handbook, Journal Co. No, no ghosting. A hoo hoo. Not, an, not even a smidge of a hint of it. You can't even hint of it. Now, if I do, do like this, the light shining through, you can kind of see, but it doesn't go through. Arteza, Arteza. This is heavy, heavy card, so it's not going through on that. Now, the alcohol markers might, but the Japanese design cover, again, I do not know who made this. Um, and it has like a gray texture. -y. It didn't go through. I thought it might go through on this because it's kind of a porous feeling paper, but it didn't go through. And the ELO sketchbook, it didn't go through, but I can barely see it ghosting just a little. But this is the slickest, best so far to me, writing with ink writing with ink is really nice on this elo all right now let's see let's do a quick little color pencil because i think you'll be able to see any texture with color pencil so i'm just going to put and i'm picking up some of this right here there's a you know there's this pocket behind here so i'm picking up the texture of that pocket there so let's just move over a little because i'm picking up the pocket texture but i want you to see the texture and I don't need to write color pencil. You know that this is color pencil. Again, I'm picking up some of the pocket. Okay, here's the ohuhu. I'll put them all up to the camera in a minute. And I'll try to put, make sure I put this in playlist under journal, mixed media, so you can see what, um, you know, this particular video. Mary, all TA, has figured out how, and it, it's not that hard, I don't think. I just haven't had the, taken the time to do it. But you can put timestamps on your banners now. I'm not sure how you do that in StreamYard, or do you have to go back? I'm not sure. The thing about, here's one of the things about editing your videos in YouTube on a live show, if you edit your videos, now I could be wrong on the on the time stamping thing, but if you edit your videos in YouTube from a live show, it gets rid of your chat. Your chat will go away. And I think that's good in the sense that when you, people are chatting live and you're talking about one thing, it can be misconstrued to have a chat that doesn't match up with what you're doing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, if I was talking about one thing and, and then all of a sudden that chat was totally not in theme with what I was talking about. So anyway, if you edit anything in your YouTube video, the chat goes away. So just want you to know that. That's why I don't I don't edit anything anyway. Y'all get what you get. OK, here's the Artez, Arteza one. And again, I'm picking up some of this uh, plastic sleeve back here. This one feels really good with pencil for, to me. It has enough tooth, but not too much tooth. So it's really blending nice. This one's, this one's, Arteza's a good blender one for the pencil. I'm liking that on the pencil. Now these two are, this one is real textured and this one is really the slickest. Okay, so here's the 
grayish kind of paper. Oh, now the pencil's going nice on, again, picking up the pocket. But the pencil is, if, this is a good textury one for the pencil. And I'm trying to do hard pressure and no pressure and a little bit of blend, just so you can see uh, the difference there. Okay, now this is on the slick one. Again, I am on some rubbing on the from the other. This is so slick. And, you know, when you have a perfectly slick paper, it's usually not the best for color pencil um, because it's picking up nothing, no tooth, I mean. Very slick. Okay, I need to sharpen these real quick. Well, no, I'm done. Okay, so there's the pencil. I'm not going to write. take the time to write pencil. You can see that it's color pencil. All right, so now let's go ahead and do... I don't need a, another ballpoint. Let's do... And I got both sides to use, so we can use both sides. Um, all right, here's a here's a brush pen. These are the Arteza watercolor brush pens. Again, I picked everything in purple. What do you normally do in those books you have there? Well, have you not uh, not? I don't want to be rude, but I've done hundreds of I've done hundreds of journal uh, hundreds of journal uh, pet books and pages. Uh, and maybe maybe you haven't seen some of my videos or you're new. I don't know. I don't know because I I do tons of journals. I'm not going to pull all my journals out right now because I don't have time because I want us to make a magazine journal. <laughs> okay. I don't even know who asked me that question. All right. So now these are the Arteza water brush. And again, I picked a light and a dark purple, so we'll just see. I'll start up here on the Arteza one. Okay, so and I'll try to do a little bit of a blend. Okay, so this one, let's put a little bit. It's, it's kind of resisting. It's like kind of resisting. It's not wanting to lay down on this one. I'll try it on a slick one. Now, but now if we take water, let's take water and try to move it. It's not wanting to move. Okay, so there's kind of that. And uh, I, I think, I don't think these, I think, well, I'll try them on a slick one here, but I don't think they're drying out, but we'll test. We'll test it on a slick one. Oh, I don't want that pen. I want this one. Okay, so this is the Arteza water brush. And let's see if it goes through. No, it doesn't go through, but this is thick paper. It may go through on some of these, so we'll see. Okay. Um, hi, Sandra. Thank you again for my kitty. I showed your, I showed the order that I got from you and your cat earlier. I love it so much. I'm right now. I'm testing. Okay. So again, this one's picking it up a little better. It's kind of dragging it here. These. Here's the thing about the Arteza brush markers, water brush markers. Is this is very flimsy. The tips are very flimsy. They're not. You don't get old pressure, you know, know what I mean, Vern? Okay, so again, let's try this with a little bit of water. It's not moving, eh, maybe a slight move on the, on the gray uh, paper. Again, I'm going to hold all these up for you so you can see them. Water brush. Okay, now let's go. Now this one I expect to be really slick. Okay, let's just get the dark one first. Yeah, look, see how smooth. So these water brushes, you really want to use these Arteza water brushes on slick paper. Okay, let's add a little bit of water. Again, they're not wanting to move much with water. The Arteza ones. Okay, there's the Arteza water brush very slick surface so you'll, you'll be able to tell well let me just kind of show you here see the difference in the texture again i'm not following chat too much hi naja uh devin nanette i know i'm probably missing people coming in okay so i'm trying to get this done so we can move on to the um we can move on to the uh, magazine journal making Okay, so let's do this one in the, oh, I got had some on my hand. Okay, it's going on fairly well in this e handbook journal co company. And it is blending a little on there. Okay, so this is the, 
I'm going to use a water brush. And it doesn't seem like they're really moving much with the... It's moving a little bit more on this one than any of the others. And we'll see what goes through in just a minute. And finally on the... Oh, hoo hoo. I need to move this over. Okay, let's do the dark one here. Very slick. So it's going to go... It's going to go on here. Okay, and then the lighter color. They're blending slightly... Let's put a little water on here. Not moving too much, but a little bit if I keep move, keep adding the water. Okay, so let me write on here. And you really want to do this with all anything you use in your book. Go in the back of the page, go in the back of the book and have a test page for your pens, your markers, because you never know what's going to do what. Hi, Michelle, and you don't know if you're going to like. Oh, Stamperia is based in Hungary, and Chow Bella is in Italy. Thank you, Zandra. Oh, I need to write that down. Stamperia, Hungary. Thank you. Chow Bella is in Italy. Thank you. I will keep that note. All right. All right, I got five notes over here. <laughs> All right, so now we got a couple more things. I'm going to test just a Sharpie marker, just a plain Sharpie marker. Now I'm going to test it on this side because it's probably going to go through on most of them. All right, so let's get everything in here. All right, so let's go into the Arteza. Arteza. Okay, and I'm going to write on here Sharpie marker. I'm not going to write marker, I know. Okay, so here... This that I'm writing with is a Sharpie pen. Sharpie pens don't really go through anything. The marker now, that's a different story. Oh, it's so smooth on here. I'm liking this little Elo brand. I got to say, I'm liking this Elo brand. Of course, it's going to depend on what you want to do. And if this one's uh, alcohol-based, doesn't go through, then that's going to be a winner for the alcohol markers. Okay. Michelle, I, I'll show them all again in a minute. Okay. Oh, I'm dropping my pen. <clears throat> okay, then this one is the handbook journal, and that's a Sharpie. Let me write that down. Here's all the names of them at the top, although this one I don't have a name. It just has a Japanese cloth cover design on the cover. Okay, here's the, and it does feel good. The, the marker does feel good on this one, too. So for the Sharpies, again, we're going to see if it gone, it's gone through on any of them. The feel of the pens, the feel of them, the Ohuhu and the Elo. But they're the smooth ones, too. This one has a little bit of texture. The Arteza has, I'm on the smooth side. Again, there's a textured size and a smooth side. All right, so let's see what's happened with these. Here is the Handbook Journal Company, and the Sharpie does go through. Let's save the Ohuhu for last. The Arteza, Arteza, Sharpie, Ghost. Just slightly. It didn't go through, but this is probably the heaviest of all the papers. This is probably the heaviest of all the papers. You can barely see it ghosting there. Okay, this little Japanese, which is just a cloth Japanese design. There's no name in it. Um, let's see what happens here. And it has like a gray paper. It did go through. Okay, the Elo, which I love the slickness of this paper. It's it feels like a like a true Bristol. It feels really good, especially with the pens. And it ghosted. It didn't go through, but you can slightly see it ghost through. Okay, but that's pretty good for a sharpie. Sharpies usually go through everything. You know, sharpies usually go through everything. Okay, now let's test. Let's test um, a Posca. All right, so then we'll go over here to the art, and let's see. Let's just, okay, that feels really good, okay? I'm just going to go ahead. This, again, is very textured, and you can see it's kind of rough. I'm sure that this is probably good for something. I'm just not sure what I would use this textury paper for, okay? All right, the it goes on real, it, it almost, it almost uh, leaves, like a light and dark with the Posca because this is so slick. OK, 
Okay, and I will write the names on here on, on them in a minute. Okay, the hand journal book. Okay, that looks good on there. And the oh hoo hoo. I've got to get some going here. It feels like it wants to soak this up, but it goes on nice and flat there. Okay, um, let me write. Oh, let's move that pen over there. Let's write here, Pasca. This has a little tooth. This one is smooth. The Arteza has a little bit of tooth, but I am using this. There's a rougher side and a smooth side, and I am on the smooth side. Okay, did, didn't go through. Didn't go through on the Arteza. The Posca you can slightly go, slightly. And then the Posca in the Ohuhu, nothing. Then the Posca on this little Japanese design one. Didn't go through. This the water up here on the art on the water one did, but I think that's because I added the water. But well no, the water brush here didn't didn't really even ghost. I'm liking this paper right here, guys. Although this paint, the paint pen in the Posca, you can see where it's light, kind of a little bit light and dark from the mark because it's sliding. It's sliding over a slick paper, so it's it's not a solid. It's not a solid color. Um, the ELO seems to be acting a little like paper is coated with something. It kind of, it doesn't quite feel like a, doesn't quite feel like a uh, um, oh, what's the name of that? Mol a Moloskina, but it's the closest to a Moloskina. I should probably be testing a Moloskina as well, but I wanted to test the four books and the Arteza, the four books that Katie sent. Okay, now let's test the Arteza paint pen, acrylic paint, acrylic paint pen. Okay, so let's... And they have a bullet. I think they have a new one out that's a, that's a pointy one. But this set that I bought has the bullet tip. Okay. And it only has one side. Okay. So this is the, and I'm going to write the name here. <clears throat> and it feels kind of the same as the Posca, actually. It feels the same when I'm using it. But let's see what happens when we see if it goes through. So this is the Arteza, Arteza paint pen. I got to write pen because I have Arteza paints too. So I don't want to confuse the two. Arteza paint pen. <clears throat> this feels good to write on. This paper right here. Th these two are the best to write on, but they're the slickest too. The other three have a slight texture, which is, you know, I'm going to do a little watercolor test. All right, so I'm going to do two more tests. I want to do a watercolor test. Oh, I want to, no, I actually want to do three, because I want to do a, a, a now this is Hoo Hoo Hero. This book here is Oh Hoo Hoo. I don't know if it's the same company or not. But I'm going to test the, uh, the Hoo Hoo Hero and a Copic. Okay, I got the Copic. I also have the, um, wait, one of these. Let's see, I don't need those three. Let's just do two. I also pulled some watercolor, some purple, just to test some watercolor. I also got a Tombow. See, I got quite a few. I even pulled one of the Jane Davenport Jellyfish Ink pins so let's go ahead let's move this out of the way so let's test a couple more let's try to finish this by 10. <laughs> tanya says i've been organizing my craft you know i get so much from you. oh thank you oh, oh you're talking are you talking to zandra in her shop oh yeah i trust me i know i buy i love buying from zandra okay so let's see let's do the let's do the hoo hoo let's do this Okay, so the hoo hoo. I probably don't need two, but let's see what happens. Okay, let's use the uh, let's do the chisel side so I can get a bigger 
mark. Okay, I don't know if that one's kind of, I don't know if I've used a lot of purple. Let's see here, let's try. Yeah, that one, I just kind of, this one might be a little dry. Okay, so I'm just going to go with this one because we just need to test to see if it goes through. Hoo Hoo Hero. I'm going to do it on all of them here. So smooth and slick on here. Now, I guess I should test to see if they blend. Because let me get a lighter purple then. Let me get the lighter. Let's see. Because I, I do kind of want to test to see if they blend some. Okay, that was too. I've used that. I've used my purples up. Let's get another purple. Do I have another purple in that brand? I don't think I have another purple. I don't have another purple in the hoo oh in the hoo hoo. Okay. Um, let's see. What color was that? Yeah, that's the same color. All right. Um, did I do all of them? All right, let's see. Um pin. Okay, so these are the Hoo Hoo Hero. Let me write it down. I know it takes a minute to do this, but I want to, you know, don't want to lose track of which ones are which. And, then we'll, and I'm going to hold them all up close so you can see or zoom in one or the other. Probably zoom in would be best. And then we'll get to the magazine journal making. Oh, moo hoo. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, hero. Okay, so this worked really good. The hoo hoo's worked really good. All right, let's test and see here if it went through. Okay, the Arteza, it went through. Look. The Japanese, uh, and I'm just calling it that because it has a Japanese design. I have no idea who makes this. It went right through. Okay. The Hoo Hoo Hero in the Elo, it ghosted, but it didn't go through. I'm surprised. This paper's winning. This is a winning paper right here, babe. That right there. Okay. The uh, Handbook Journal, it did, went right through. And the Oh Hoo Hoo, it did go through a little bit. Now I'm going to test a uh, Copic as well. But I would have thought that this, because this was supposedly made for a uh, for oh who who markers that it wouldn't have gone through look it didn't go through on the elo it ghosted but it didn't go through and this is almost going through so uh oh what eileen hi eileen we were talking about you earlier about antonio's classes did you say good morning to me or are you just coming in here and talking about classes you're going to take <laughs> I have to tease her. I lead the enabler. I have to tease her. <laughs> I'm sure she said good morning to me. She wouldn't, she wouldn't do that. So um <laughs> night, Cindy. Thank you for stopping. In. <laughs> I'm gonna I have to go. I've only seen a couple samples. I haven't seen any of his classes, but I know you're taking those classes, Eileen. So you'll have to give us updates on those classes and the projects that you do. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a Tombow, and I'll do it over here. So this is a Tombow is like a water-based, uh, and I got I got these uh, some of these for brush lettering, and it's going. On, I mean this this pen right here is going on smooth on everything. Did I get them all five? This if this is just slick as can be. The Tombow is going smooth on. All of them, even on the little uh, textured one. So this is the Tombow. I got these to do brush lettering with when Janet and I were going to do a bunch of <laughs> brush lettering. But this Tombow, this Tombow is nice. I'm liking this on all of them. Now, does it blend? I don't know. I don't think I have a, two shades of the purple to show if it blends or not. I think it's a W. Yeah. Okay, but that is really feeling very slick and nice. So let's see if it went through on anything. Okay, so on the Arteza, the Tombow, the bottom one here, did not go through at all. Japanese uh, paper design, I don't know what this is, it's just great, did not go through. That The Sharpie went through there. The Tombow did not go through. The bottom one here, Tombow, did not go through. And this one, nope. And in this one, no, the Tombow did not go through on anything. 
All right, so let's try a Copic. I'm hoping these Copics don't need to be refilled. I just pulled them real quick. Let me get a sip of juice here. Okay, let's test the Copics. I think I picked a blue-gray instead of a purple. Okay, it's not really wanting to blend. I'm trying to force it to blend, and it's not really wanting to blend. And it does go through. I'll go away to the next page. Okay, let's test it on the Ohuhu book. It's not wanting to blend. And it does go through. Okay, the Arteza. It's blending slightly. This Japanese kind of textury paper. Mm, no, not really blending. Maybe a little tiny bit. And on the ELO, no, it's not really wanting to blend much on any of them, to tell you the truth. <laughs> it's not really wanting to blend on any of them. But that's the Copic. So let's write Copic. I'm going to hold them all up. Y'all can be the judge yourself. Let's look and see what went through and what didn't. Okay, so on the little hand book journal, it did go through. The Copic went through. The Copic on the oh hoo, hoo went through. The Arteza, it went, is that it? Yeah, it went through. When I, it, it, let me put it this way. It went through where I tried to really blend. So right there in the middle, where I kept going over and over and over it, that in the middle, that's where I tried to blend it. That's what went through. But it really didn't go through like I expected it to just by straight use. But with Copics, you're going to want to blend. So you got to, you know. Okay, so this is the little Japanese design when it went through. And the little ELO one went through the last. I mean, this paper, this is, this is rocking everything. It's rocking everything. Okay, so now let's do a couple. Let's do um, let's do one little swipe with the Jane Davenport um, jellyfish uh, ink pen. Like I think it's I think that's what it is in in her jellyfish. Sandra, aren't these ink? Aren't her gel? Aren't aren't her? Um, uh, I, I don't even know what she called uh, mermaid markers. Aren't her mermaid markers ink? Or are they watercolor? I'm not sure. I don't remember. But I'm going to do that over here. Okay, so let's. And this is kind of a, a red purple. But uh, it's what I put, pulled. So let's put a little on each page here. Just put a little on each page. It's really soaking up in this, this one. It's like I can, it's just, you can see it soaking up. And it's sitting more on top on the ELO. So I'll show it each one here in a minute. Okay. There, it's a, I know it's a water brush, but it, what's in it? Is it watercolor or is it ink? Xandra, do you know? Is it ink or watercolor? Okay. So this is the J. Jen Davenport um, mermaid. <clears throat> I'm just going to put M marker because it's a mermaid marker is what she calls them. So the JD Mermaid marker. So I'm not sure if it's watercolor or ink. <clears throat> JD Mermaid marker. Just want to label each one. Okay. I hope y'all are getting something out of this. Um, uh, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Okay, so let's see what happens. Did any of them go through? Jane Davenport mermaid markers. No, not, I mean, if I hold it up to the light, I can see it ghosting, but it didn't really go through on the handbook journal co. Oh, hoo hoo. No. Arteza. No. This Japanese design, I'm calling it because of the paper. I, I mean, because of the cover. I have no idea who made this, but it's like a gray. It feels very porous. Uh, I can almost see it ghosting, but not quite. 
And then the ELO, no. But the difference here on the ELO is you can see how it almost sits on top. See how it kind of sits on top of the paper there? We're going to go through it, uh, show them all up close. All right, two more things to test. Well, look, I was going to test the Sharpie um, highlighter, but I'm not going to do that. All right, let's just go ahead and do some uh, watercolor, which is a watercolor brush. All right, so let's uh, just get some, let's just spray this down a bit, this purple. Okay, I'm just going to do a, a watercolor swatch. I think I have room on the bottom of each. Well, not this one. I'll have to do it over there. Okay. All right. So let's just do a Jane Davenport watercolor. Okay. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to put water. I'll just do like this. Textury. Smooth. Oh, look. Look at this one. See how it's, this is like a coat. It is like Christine said. It's kind of like a coating of some kind. Kind of reminds me similar to the Moloskina. See how it's kind of, it's not really beating up, but it's not soaking in. Okay, let's do these two over here. Okay. All right. So now let me. Let me clean my brush. I got them on. And to clean a water brush, I found the best way is to take a Kleenex. Take a Kleenex and then just kind of squeeze the water through the brush. This cleans it the best because it kind of the tissue soaks it up better than a paper towel would. Okay, so let's go ahead and put uh, JD watercolor. I don't know that it matters which watercolor, but I'm going to put it. JD watercolor. Jane Davenport. And we'll see what, if any, went through. Oh, and all these, all these journals I forgot to mention have a little, um, have ribbons in them too. I think all of them do. So I'll make sure and show a little bit better each journal here. JD watercolor. And the pen, the Sharpie just writing, these two, which are slicker. The, if you want a journal for writing, this is really good. It just glides over. Your pen, it just glides over these two papers. <clears throat> and the other three have a slight texture. Okay, there we go. Let's see if any of it went through. So we did test. We tested a lot of purple pens <laughs> and pencils. Okay, so let's, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in now and so we can uh, hopefully, um, and let's re-auto, oh, that might be too close. Let's zoom back out one. Let's re-auto focus. Maybe brighten it just a tad. I don't know if we want to bright or white balance it. Maybe just a slight brightness. There we go. I think that's pretty true to it. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, the theme is purple, Devin. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a magazine journal here in a minute. All right. So let's look at each one. Okay, and I know the clarity goes away a little bit when we're so zoomed in, but I think we need to be this close. So this one right here is the Handbook Journal Co. Company, and uh, it's the square one. Again, um, it is five and a half by five and a half. The paper is acid-free, 128 pages, doesn't have the weight on it that I can see. All right, but that's what this is. So you can kind of look if you want to take a screenshot just so you have a little bit more info. Hopefully it's clear enough. Is it clear enough, Pecola or Janet? How's it look clarity wise? I want it to be as clear as possible, but I can tell it's a little, it's not quite as clear when I zoom in, but hopefully you can see. All right, let's see if the watercolor, the watercolor did not go through. Okay, so that's the Handbook Journal Co. Okay, and it does have a ribbon. Let me get to the, let me do a little bit of 
Thank you, Katie, for sending me four of these books. She sent me all these except the Arteza one. It has a ribbon. And of course, it has the band. This feels a little textury. It's a little, uh, it has a little more texture to it. It looks good. Okay. So there's that one. Then this larger one is an eight, I think it's an eight and a half. 8.3 8 by 8.3, 120 uh, pound, 78 sheets. So, you know, it's, they're just counting the single sheets. It does have a ribbon. Let's get to the ribbon here. It has a black ribbon. Okay. And then here's our test. This one's the largest one, so we're the most zoomed in here. Let me kind of just set this one down so you can see the whole thing. And the watercolor did not go through. So, but the, the Copics and the Who Who Hero did go through. Now, again, this is Oh Who Who, and this paper is supposedly made for their markers. I don't have their markers, so I can't really say on theirs. But this one has a, a, kind, of a kind of a weird sheen kind of to it. And uh, let me put, and it did, it did come with a little pamphlet. And here's the belly band on it. Let me put that back together for you. Has a pocket in the back and a nice thick uh, wide elastic. So that's that one. Then of course the Arteza one. I already had this one. So let's see if you can want to see the colors and the texture there. The watercolor. Did not go through. The only thing that went through, and this is probably the heaviest of all the papers in these five books. This one has the heaviest paper. Again, I did the smooth side, the text, there's a textured side that has a little bit more tooth to it. And uh, hi, Art in the City. Anybody else I miss? Jan, I'm just looking and trying to get through these journals here for you. This one does have, they do have ribbons in them. And a pocket, a plastic pocket in the back, like a little CD case holder type thing. And this one has a Tweety, like a Tweety uh, cover and the uh, kind of textury band. 88 pages, five and a half by five and a half, 110 pound weight. All right, then this one again. Um, it doesn't have a ribbon in it. It does have a pin loop, though, and you could use it this way if you wanted. It has a, a cloth covered. I'm calling it the Japanese one because it has a Japanese motif. I don't know what who makes these. Uh, it has a little pocket in the back, um, but this is one that Katie sent. It had a plot, you know, it was cut wrapped, but it didn't have a, na a brand name on it. But you could use it like this, and you could have the, the pocket on the side the loop on the side. Let me show you. And it has a gray paper. It's a slightly gray. It's probably not showing up on camera, but it has a slightly gray paper. Yes, I will be starting a new project on Wednesday. I didn't invent the project. I saw it on Instagram. I'm not going to tell you what it is, <laughs> but uh, it'll be fun. So I think so. And again, the texture of the pencil there, it picked up the, uh, pocket there so yeah so there's the jane davenport watercolor it did not go through just the alcohol markers is the only thing that went through and so it has a little band on it and then the last one here which is i'm most impressed with it's it feels kind of like the uh, moleskina paper not exact but it feels close and this is a little elo and i'm sure it comes in different sizes too has a blue ribbon Elo sketchbook. This is a four and a half by four and a half, so it's the tiniest of them. But the this is the one I'm most impressed with the paper. And you can follow them on. Uh, I'm going to go follow them on IG. And uh, show me your hashtag. Show me your Elo. So I might uh, take a picture of this and show them my Elo with all these different um, tests because I really like it. It does feel has a little bit of some kind of coating, because you can see where I went over with the watercolor. See how it didn't soak right in? It kind of, it, which is kind of cool if you're doing watercolor, if you want your watercolor to kind of float there for a second. So I have to say, this is the one I'm the most impressed with. 
as far as the paper, but I just, I had such a pleasant experience writing and swatching on this paper. I don't know what kind of paper it is, but it's nice. So this is the little pocket ELO sketchbook and it does have a gray band and this band is tight. That's a nice tight band. So I'm, I might have to invest in, and it has their, it, it feels kind of rubbery. The cover is kind of rubbery. It's not textury or flat. It's kind of a rubbery feel to it. It has a good feel. I, I, I'm really impressed with the ELO. Just saying. Real impressed with the ELO. Hi, Carla. Okay, so that is the five sketchbook test today. And I hope y'all got something out of that with all these markers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to back out. That's probably good. I will re um, I will refocus, I think. Let's see. Let me put something out here to focus on. We're going to do a... Um, We're going to work, we're going to make a magazine journal. So this, oh, let me get one of the big ones here. Let me take a sip of juice. I have multiple big magazine journals. I'll just pull one just to show you. So you can make them in a, two sizes. Well, you make them any size you want. This one is three magazines three magazines. This one is three magazines cut in half. So they, they're about the same size. Um, no, this one is obviously a little thicker. It depends on the magazine. Let's see, is that three? I think that's three. Maybe it's only, yeah. Okay, so what a magazine journal is, is a few things. It's a place for you to practice your, uh, especially acrylic paint, your paint blending, your paint shading, your paint matching, or color. I should say color, but I use acrylic paint. So if you like to see, okay, oh, I'm sorry, got to go to the dentist. Okay, Z, will they give you some gas <laughs> to make you, give, give you some laughing gas? I don't know what, you know. Okay, take care, Zandra. And thanks again so much, guys. I showed it earlier, but I'll show it again. Zandra in my order included her steampunk cat that she made. There's a two-part video. There's a two-part video on how she made this. If you want to see how Zandra makes these, go over to Scraps to Beauty. And there's a two-part um, from last week how she made that. Awesome. Okay, I guess Jack goes give me the gas. So this one, um, and again, see how the spine is warped to the side? This was probably my second magazine journal. And I tell you all this now, uh, having learned this, and whether you're doing an altered book, an abandoned book, a sketchbook that's hard, you know, that's bound. If you're going to do a lot of wet mediums, that's going to be like painting and a lot of stuff that's going to get your book wet. You want to work front to back, back to front, some in the middle, back to front, because if you just work straight front to back, it's going to do this. It's going to warp your spine. So there's the first tip I'm going to tell you. Um, the second thing is, is this is just, uh, this is three or four magazines glued together at the covers. Okay. You want to glue, you ideally want to glue them and let them sit overnight. I'm going to show, I'm going to make you another, I'm going to make another one of these today and show you how I make this. And I'm going to go ahead and do the gluing, but I'm going to go ahead and tape them together as well with packing tape, just so that they don't move. But you really want to like put some heavy books on it overnight when you use, and the glue I use is just like tacky glue like this. Okay, this is the kind of glue I use. So what it does is with a magazine journal like this, you can, um, let's see, let me turn down the brightness just a tad. There we go. Um, you can practice reverse collaging where you get rid of the backgrounds or get rid of anything you don't want. And then what you do is you can accent, paint around, you can extend the images that you've left. 
and you can also color match. So whatever colors are on the page, um, let me find another one here. Oh, I have a lot of these are just inked in the back. Okay, here's a good example. So you can use your stamps. You can use anything. You can use anything. They're like a, a just a practice junk journal, practice your painting, your coloring. What I think the most benefit out of this, hi, Aunt Beth, hi, Candy. The biggest benefit to me when I tell someone to try this in a magazine journal is matching, especially if you like with acrylic paints. That's what I use, acrylic paints. I do not glue pages together. They're single pages. But that being said, this is not a fashion magazine. This is like Somerset Studio or an art magazine that has a little bit more stability to it. Fashion magazines, although they're the cheapest, they're also the thinnest. Uh, so I don't find a need to glue these together because of all the paint I add. You can also add more collage on this. You can just do anything in, in, in your journals. You can do anything. But the benefit of a magazine journal is you have something, a color on there. Now, I recommend if you have pages that have a lot of text on them, okay, you can go in and paint out the text, whether you do it with the color or white it out, uh, or whatever color, you know, whatever you want to do. You don't, you don't have to like gesso. You can white it out if you want, and then put color on top so that your colors are more pure, um, rather than, uh, you know, depending on what color is underneath that you're painting on top of. But just craft paints. I just use craft paints. That's all I'm using. Other than if you see some textured edges, that's an ink pad where I've, you know, added an ink pad edge to them. Like right here, you see that little texture right here? That's an ink pad edge there. But, and this is an old one. I, I, I think this one's probably, I don't even know, six, five, six years. I think, I'm not even sure I made these before I started uploading to YouTube. So they may be back from Ustream. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, I've, I've shown them a lot. So you can see them in videos where I flip through them. But as far as making them or working it, work it, this is the one that I've worked in the most, the smaller one on, on our YouTube videos. Uh, <clears throat> but matching up your colors and how to color, you know, blend your colors to match something. It's just a, an excellent way to, here's one that just has some ink on it with the white painted out uh, text. And there's just all kinds of things you can do. Look, paint it out the purple because I like the pink and purple. Now you can go in here and paint with your Arteza or, or probably even use your water. Let's see here. Let's see, you can go on top with just a, a Sharpie, um, I mean a, a Crayola Super Tip. And uh, let's see, here's an Arteza paint pen. Let's test. Here's a Posca. And this is just craft paint. Okay. I do not recommend, and I don't think anybody that uses Copics would recommend you using Copics can, can be ruined. Your tip, your Copic tip can be ruined and probably the Arteza and the Posca after a while. But don't use your Copic alcohol markers that are very expensive on top of your um, acrylic paint. Unless it's just a little something, something. But don't be... Don't be going blendy crazy with your Copics on top of uh, acrylic paint because that can ruin ruin your, uh, what do you call it, your Copics. So again, you can see here there's nothing done on this one, but you can see how I've kind of wanted to match, a, you know, the mint color in there. But you can do, you can do whatever and any color. Here's one where I did some uh, textures on this one, probably with um, a palette knife. And just scraped in some textures, and which I did do that quite many times in this small one, which I'll, I'm going to show this one more extensively. But I wanted to show you a larger one just so you can see. Um, you can just see. So what the benefit of it is, is if you have a color, if you have a color in the image that you left, you can try to match that color or you can contrast, you can do whatever you want. But it's a good way for you to try to uh, match and color coordinate uh, things. So you can see every page has all these different colors on them. Some are smoother, some are more textured. And um, 
So you can just do so much with it. And then after you've done this part, you can go back in again with more. Like, let's just say we have this background here. Let me get a tray here. Now, you don't want to do what I'm getting ready to do and then close the book because then you're going to stick your pages together. But uh, so now I can go on here. You want to make sure all your pages are dry. But you, it, it's a good practice in blending your elements together. You know, you got all these different elements on the page that you've left. <clears throat> and now you can go in here with your palette knife. Or, you know, you can also use a, a card to scrape it with. Palette knife, you have a little bit more control over the pressure you're putting on there and how much paint. So, um, so you can do all, there's just so much you can do in a magazine journal, because here's the thing, when you have a, you have some old summer sets, some old whatever magazines, art journaling, whatever kind they, and they don't have to be an art magazine. It could be a um, home and garden, an architect. I just wouldn't recommend a fashion magazine because they're so thin. You can glue them together if you want. That's way too much sugar for a dime to me. So I don't do that. I don't glue anything together. Composition books, none of it. I don't glue any of it together. So you can see how you can make layers of color and play with the color. There's a little bit of blue there. I could go in here with a little bit of blue. And there's just so much you can do in a magazine journal because you're not afraid. Look, there's some scrapbook paper I've glued on. Here's one that's smoother, blended out. Um you know, here's a couple of two or three colors based on the imagery. It's just a great way. This one's got the texture. It's just a great way to play. And, um, and, and it can be a glue book. It can be, it can be a paint and glue. It can be collage and paint and inking. You know, you can glue your journaling. I would, I don't really recommend you can journal on top of acrylic paint with a big pen. I don't like to do that. I'd rather journal on some of uh, some other like a journaling spot or something like that. And then glue that in, glue your journaling or tape it or washi tape it into your book. Okay. So this is the large one. This is a regular size magazines. And I'm going to set this aside because until I, you know, I could hit it with a heat gun, but I'm just going to set it aside. All right, let me get a baby wipe to clean my hands. And uh, speaking of cleaning my hands, this one right here, we we did a bulk of this either with a palette knife or with just uh, painting with my fingers, finger painting. Now, uh, before I go and show you this, because this is what we're going to do today, is I had the Somerset Studio Gallery. Somerset Studio Gallery old magazines and again i'll repeat some of the things i said if you don't feel comfortable cutting this is what i used if you don't feel comfortable cutting these in half and and i recommend if you can go to an office supply or ups store or someplace where they cut things down and have them cut your magazine down for you i think they charge two dollars to cut it in half uh, I cut these all myself, but they're not perfect. They're not going to be perfect. Look at this. Can you see how that is uh, uneven? They're not perfect. You're not going to get it very perfect. And I took my time. I took my time to cut these slowly and carefully. And they still came out a little uneven, a little off. But one of the tips I'll tell you about it is if you have a magazine that you want to cut down and you put it on your put it on your tray. You got to have a cutting mat. What you want to do, you want to measure exact, as exact as you can, because if you're even just the slightest bit off, one, one section is going to be bigger than the other. So you want to try to get it as exact in the middle as you possibly can. You use your metal ruler, turn it on its side like this, and, and start with your cuts on the spine. Cut on the spine. I'm not going to cut this because I just got done cutting all those other ones. But you want to start on the spine because this is the thickest part with all the glue. So you're probably going to have to do two or three extra cuts on this part th than you would on the other end. So it's best if you start on the spine side and you're going to take your time. You're going to slide and slide. And so you're going to have to probably do 100 cuts. 
I'm not exaggerating. You're going to have to cut very slow and carefully. Keep your hand out of the way and take your time. Don't try to go fast. I, I Trust me, I can't tell you, not a whole bunch of times and not with one of these box cutters, but with an X-Acto knife, I've cut my thumb doing this. So if you can take it somewhere and have it cut down for you, I would recommend that. But don't use a plastic ruler. Do not use a plastic ruler. <laughs> Use a metal ruler, and if you don't have a box cutter, you can use your X-Acto blade. You might have to change it a time or two, depending on how many you cut. You can do it with an X-Acto blade, but take your time. You've got to do it so slow. This is not, and this channel is not for kids, but especially kids, do not, do not try this at home. So anyway, and then cut it in half with your, on your cutting mat. Remove this, you already cut them. Make another stack on the floor here. All right, so I've cut down three magazines. I'm going to show you this one in a minute. So I've cut down this Somerset Gallery, this Somerset Gallery. You can see where I made the mark there with the Sharpie. This one, and I cut down the Somerset Apprentice. Some of these are old. I'm not sure how old. I, some of them I have back. I have Somerset Studio magazines back to 1999. I've got hundreds of Somerset Studio. Stampington is the uh, publishing company, Stampington. They do the uh, art journaling. They do Somerset Studio. I don't know that they make Apprentice or Gallery anymore. That the stamping, they've got Bella, Bella Grace. They've probably got 20 different magazines. So um, this is just a good way to use them up. All right. So one of them came out a little taller than the others, this one. I'm going to put that one in the back. They do not have to be in any kind of order. Preferably, you don't want them in order. You want them kind of uh, not together because what you're going to do is when you go through these, you don't really want anything matching up. You're going to get half pages. You're going to get half pages. Okay. So and you can see how thick this is going to be. All right. This is the same thing, except it's been worked in a lot. It does have a scrapbook paper cover and uh and a spine okay so i'm going to show you how to do an extra i haven't picked a cover yet i need to go get go in my scrapbook papers and pick uh, a paper to wrap this in but what i want to just give you a little tour of this just not i'm not going to go through every page obviously i've gone through every page if you look in uh i think it's called my mixed media uh what was it called um it's mm there's a name i had a name for this some years ago mixed media i don't know pacola might know it but no worry if she doesn't but anyway mini magazine mixed media mini magazine playground or something like that anyway <laughs> yeah there you go devin says she cut one into a square shape it does take a long time oh to fill it up yeah it takes a long time to fill it up and it does take some time to cut it now you can see some of mine are starting to warp here you know, but I, I do, I don't really care too much about it warping, but you, if you want your spine to stay any kind of straight, you want to work front to back, middle and around, right? Yeah, that's on the scrapbook paper. Uh, I don't remember what, who made it or what. And plus I've inked all this. I painted, I painted all the edges black. Now, if you do decide to paint your edges black or gold or black with a gold on top, you want to be careful to keep it moving. You got to kind of air it out and keep it moving. You're going to glue all your pages together. <laughs> so you got to be careful when you do your edging. Okay. So again, this is just, all right, we did this one in 2017. So it's got all kinds of little magazine images, things you love. You can put anything. And again, a lot of this is just finger painted in. And I'll probably do a page to show. Um, this is... Um, uh, Salvador Dali. I love surrealism. And so I've just done a little ask your questions, your who, what, where, when, why, how. Um, just different. We wrote here with uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, what do you call the, you know, the, the squeeze, the, uh, hang on. I can't think of what this is called now. This part. We wrote with this. So just with squeezing, getting some ink with the squeeze thing and just wrote with this. I don't know why I'm not thinking of what it's called. <laughs> anyway, 
you know, you got 20 things going through your head. So here is, um, this was a page in the magazine. This was all done with finger painting, uh, the clouds and everything. Now, I will say that what I did in this one, I went through this. There may be one or two pages that I missed, but I tried to go through this whole book and white out all the text. So I spent like a day just whiting out the text but you don't have to do that ahead of time i just wanted to uh, so for the most part all the text has been whited out and then painted over back over yeah the squeezy thing thank you carla the squeezy thing <laughs> and then you can go in here and kind of the same thing that i did in the larger one just on a smaller scale which is less intimidating uh, and go in and paint and doodle and draw and stamp or whatever you want. Again, though, based on the colors. So the colors in these flowers here, for example, or a little bit of tea um, of this minty green is in those flowers in there. So what I did is I squeezed out all the colors. And again, you start to learn how to mix your own colors. I have a lot of uh, of the actual, you know, individual colors. But you'll find that you'll learn so much by just putting two or three colors down and letting them mix. And we're going to do that. Uh, letting them mix with your fingers and have kind of a marbly look. So, for instance, in this case, I had like a blue, gray, a pink, and the mint. And what I probably did, I don't remember exactly, would have all three of those colors down, stuck my hand in all three colors, and then just did this lightly now you don't want to make mud but then you can pick up more if you need more um uh and and just you know smear them around i hope we're clear here maybe do i need to maybe no i don't think i need to zoom in i think we're good so then here's some pages not done again you want to kind of skip around i'm going to try to show a few of these um pages where i've kind of blended by art in the city bye thank you Thank you for coming in. Uh, let's see. Hi, Megs. Anybody else I missed? Thanks, God. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just uh, trying to get as much done today as we can. Um, so squeezing in happy mail and hauls and art journals. and Plus, I have stuff coming today. So I don't think it's going to... My mail doesn't usually get here before the show ends. But if it does, we will uh, make sure and show you. Otherwise, it will be on Wednesday because I have some books coming. Um, I did buy a couple other little things and then, um, a new project is on Wednesday. We're going to do a new project on Wednesday. Um, okay. So here we go. Pink and teal colors were in these cups. So I just kind of painted those in. I did some white, uh, gel pen doodles. I went around, I doodled around all the, the imagery and just did some paint scraping and but look how cool that looks i think it looks cool you know um and it's just you're just playing yeah hi judy <laughs> uh you're just playing and uh again here we go this is again the finger painting method where i have three colors in my tray and i just pick them up and i might pick up some more of one pick up two at a time and this is all just finger painting and then I could also go back in and scrape on top or smooth it out or ink the edges. I could write, I can journal, I could doodle, I could put pictures in this. Would be a cute little album. You could do a, like a, a smash book or a little scrapbook or something like that, you know. Here's why I've just whited out, you know, some. Some don't have anything. I don't want to go through the whole book. I'll be here all, all day. But here's another one. Again, just smearing the paint finger painting we're going to do it I'll, I'll do one real quick in this book before i show you how to put one together so again the same thing it's all the finger painting and just left that one little image and there have been a couple places where the pages have pulled apart and if they do i will just get some uh packing tape or some other, you know, uh, masking tape, but always glue it. If you're going to use, a, if you're not going to use something like a packing tape, you're going to want to glue those tapes down because you want it to hold. But I don't care uh, if, it's, if it starts falling apart, if I need to glue something together. Uh, here, look, packing tape. That page came out, put packing tape. So 
but you can just you know, just make it look we did some just um sharpie pen design we started up this page it's not done but i never feel and i know not everybody can do this i never feel i have to finish an art journal page like you know here's this little one i pulled out earlier today these are all in progress you know some are more finished than others some have just smeared paint and haven't even gone in there with that that coating of color on here and so some are collage some are mixed media you know i have my travelers inserted or insert ones that have all different types this this has three different types in it um it has this one has uh collage and paint and it has all the holes punched out this one is whitewashed so this one has a lot of whitewash and then i can go in and add some color and then this last one this one is uh, napkins, has napkins and um, yeah, napkin journaling in this one. So then all three of these combined are just like a little mixed media, a little mixed media set. And I just work on them periodically whenever I feel like, do I want to glue today? Do I want to paint? Do I want to whatever? Then you have some just journals and you can and you can do all that I just showed you in one of these. You just, you know, paint things out, make lists um here's another one again this is all with finger painting then gone back in there with either gel pen or posca yeah the mini magazine was it art journal playground i think it was mini magazine no it had it had four m's in it it had four m's in it uh, but i don't remember but anyway mini magazines <laughs> it's been some since, since 2017 when we made this one and the bigger ones were even some years before that. So, uh, again, this is scraped, you know, painted out and then just scraped with some paint. Again, you can see uh, you can do designs. You can do these are little thumbnail ladybugs that we did all over this one. Some just have paint. Some have more doodles on them. But you're using the colors in the images and whatever's on the page. And you can just extend that. All right, let's just take a minute. And I'll have to I'll have to dry it, of course, but I got my heat gun. So let me get another tray because I don't want that one has pink in it. Let's get some yellow just to quite quickly show you here. While we shake up your paints, there's some yellow, kind of a this is a chartreuse yellow. It's not quite lime green. Um, a little bit maybe of some sienna or some. That's too orange. I want a little bit of a, let's see, this color here. This is dried clay, and then maybe a little darker green. Do I want a true green? Or, yeah, let's go with this brighter green. Let's just go with sour apple. And you, and you really want to put, because you're, especially when you're doing a uh, finger painting, you're going to be all over these edges. So you really want to put some uh, wax paper, like two pieces in yeah. I think I can tear this one in half. You want to put some wax paper between your pages because you're going to be, it's going to be a, uh, You'll glue your pages shut if you're not careful. And I'm not careful <laughs> when I do this. Okay, so you got your wax paper behind your pages. And I've got these colors, and I match those colors because of these. Now, if you don't have these exact colors, well, look at it and say, well, I could add a little white to a yellow. I could add a little green to a yellow. But this is what we're going to do anyway. So I'm going to start by, let's just start with the, let's start with the uh, tan color. Okay, so I'm going to just start with that color first. You got to kind of rub it into the spine there, into the crack and the crevice. So I'm just going to put some down here, maybe a little over on this side. Okay, so I'm going to blend this in on the edges a little. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to clean my hands, but I'm going to pick up the green and the yellow. Okay, so now I'm going to just kind of skim. I'm just kind of skimming across. If it starts to get too muddy, then take your baby wipe and wipe your hands off and, uh, and, and start over. But you, if you just kind of skim, you're going to be okay. OK, 
Okay, let's put a little more yellow up there. Maybe a little more green up in here. So I'm using the colors in the image. I'm using the colors in the image to decide what colors go on here. And you can do all kinds of things. You can stamp, you can stencil. Um, you know, you can, I'll dry this and put uh, some stencil something on it just so you can see. All right, so there we go. That's how quick that was. Okay, that's how quick that was just to put on a base. Mini, okay, well, I got to write that down, Pacola, because I'd forgotten. It's the mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground. That's what it was. Wait, I got to write that down. <laughs> So it was M, M, there's four M's. I know there's a lot of M's. And then it had idea collecting prompt playground. M, 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 I, C, P, P. That's what it was. Okay. So let me write it down. Mini magazine, mind mapping, <laughs> idea collecting, uh, idea collecting, prompt playground that was the official title of the book <laughs> thank you Pacola. thank you so much <laughs> that's what it was and we call it the mmm i think it's icpp yeah it for uh yeah okay now let me hit this with a heat gun <laughs> Okay, let me see. Let me put that up there. I'm a long time with it. I just want to comment and say, Oh, thank you so much, Miriam. That's very sweet. Very kind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pacola. I have to try to remember that I can do this. Click on the name, <laughs> click on the uh, comments. Uh, so, and let me go ahead and put real quick. There's the name of the. <laughs> Thanks, Pacola. Uh, Yes, exactly, Aunt Beck. All right, so now let me just grab, oh, I don't know. Here, I got this stencil handy, this little one here. Okay, and then you can do, you know, let's just get some white because it'll just show up better. I just, wanted, I just want this to be a little sample for you to see. Okay, so I'm going to put a little tiny bit of white. The other thing is to remember, this is why we always have a desk journal. Now, this could be your desk journal. Have some kind of journal on your table, on your craft space, wherever you work, where you can scrape up your leftover paints and put it in the book so you're not wasting your paint. So I'm sure there's another page in here somewhere that I can use these colors on. All right, so I'm going to get a sponge. Now, if you want a stencil, you always want to use a dry sponge. Once they're wet, it's all going to creep up under there. So when you stencil, use a, this is just a makeup wedge, use a dry, dry um, sponge. And I don't know, you know, we could do this like right in here maybe a little bit. And when I'm stenciling something like this, I usually don't stencil the whole stencil. I just leave, you know, a little bit like, just so it kind of carries across the page here like this. You don't have to go edge to edge on a stencil. See how that looks cool if you just pick up a little bit of it? And then if you want to continue it exactly, you can match it up and just continue it right off up the page. I don't really care. I never really worry about matching it up, but just so you can see. So you can just kind of continue. Janet never did say if I could say who our guest is. Did you, did you figure that out yet, Janet? Is your guest uh, still up for? Is your guest still up for being on your show? Let's see what Janet says. Because I was going to shout it out if you if you did or if you were. Did I miss glue? No, 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 not yet, Nancy. We haven't done it yet. It's sitting right here. I just wanted to show you this, a couple of samples of what you can do in your book. We're gonna put it together. Hang on. <laughs> All right, so see how you can do, you can use stencils, you can use stamping, you can use your foam stamps. Um, 
I'm not going to use my, I have some alphabets right behind me, but I, then I have to go in the bathroom and wash them. I don't want to go clean them right now. You can't leave your foam stamps with acrylic on them because they'll harden. So you don't want to leave your um, acrylic paint on your foamies or foam stamps. But I could put a word right here, like, you know, just, I could just put June, July, I could put, hey there, you know, <laughs> whatever you want. But you can foam stamp your words. Now let me hit this with the heat gun again. And if you like doing, and then, oh, and the other thing is put your sponges in water uh, until you can get a chance to clean them out. But if they do get crusted over, you forget to wash them or they sit, hi, Gail, then you can just snip that off. So when it's dried and crusty, you can just cut that ed edge off. I'm going to throw it in a bucket of water over here. Um, okay, so then you can also do, like, let's just pick a stamp. You can do a couple different ways. I don't even know how old this one is, but it matches. <laughs> so you can take um, your stamp pads and you can ink around the edges if you want. Which I did this a lot in the large one. I haven't done it as much in this one. But you can ink your edges or you can pick up some of your ink and, you know, do blending or whatever. You know, you can do other things. Uh, if you, you don't like all that white there, then you can kind of cover that up with some stamp pads. So there's just lots of things. You can do whatever you want. Okay. You can do whatever you want. Here comes the sun. See, that's good. I like that. That would be a good one. You know, write it out. You could, I could do it with the dauber. With, that's not the, this is not a dauber. What is this called? Somebody. Well, you know what? Here's why I don't want to do that right now, because ink takes longer to dry, and then I can't flip through the rest of the book. But uh, if you see any lettering coming up, it's probably done with the... What is that? What is this called? A dropper? Is it a dropper? Okay, well, the dropper. <laughs> okay, so just to, so you can see how you can, um, you know, here's some stenciling done on there. My Moon Pie stamp from uh, Lisa Scott. She, she ha hand carved me a moon pie stamp. So um, you can do, you know, just whatever, use whatever's on the page. Use whatever's on the page to inspire you. It's just a little inspiration. It's just a little inspiration idea prompt playground. This I probably used, uh, not this, but a cap probably. A paint cap, you know, a paint cap like this dip it in and then stamp with that um again some are just not have hardly anything done here's one we did this one i think i don't know uh maybe in the fall or something here's one done with that dropper and then just painted in some flowers and and i think all that we really left on here was this little bit right here these are some of my hand carved stamps that's a little sticker that's just a little cat sticker and you can splatter. Uh, let's see. Here, chill. Wrote that with the dauber. The dropper. <laughs> the dropper. And uh, then all the background, again, is with a uh, smeared hand, you know, just, uh, what do you call it, painting? Uh, finger painting. Here's some drips. Put some ink on there and let it drip. Pick the colors. All the colors that were chosen from the image. So let the image inspire you. Let the image inspire you. Here's one where this is my hand, one of my hand carved gargoyles. Did a little, like some kind of little scene up there, a little cave here. Scribbled in a little path. Did some clouds like this, you know, just take the white paint and just... Kind of made some misty kind of clouds. You can have the clouds coming across your image. You know, like this. And now i got to dry it, of course, because if I close the book with wet paint, it'll stick it together.
You know, there's just so much you can do in your playground. You know, again, another hand paint, you know, scrape. Now, look, there's some scissors there. I just kind of painted over the scissors, left this right here, and used these colors as the inspiration. So it's just a great way to practice. It's a great way to practice. Look, whatever. <laughs> Here's another one. We did some lettering. I'm trying to get to some pages that are done here. There's another one that, we, and these are all just hand painted little cattails in there. I put one in the little bird's mouth. So use whatever's there and just let it inspire you. Whatever is on the page. Oh, I love this page. This is the enablers. <laughs> and I think we named them Eileen, uh, Janet, and I forget who. But anyway, bye, bye, bye. And over here, the little wolf's going, no. <laughs> As in, so the enablers uh, page. And again, just more painties. You know, just you can use a, you don't like to touch the paint. You can go in there with a the brush. I just think it's freeing and fun to go in there and finger paint, right? Just go in there and finger paint. This one is based off of um, this. Uh, Oh, what's her name? Anyway, this is her image here. So I decided to go, roll with that. And, um, oh, I know some of y'all know her, who she is. Um, anyway, and then I just did a spine thing and some feathers with my, it's all done with finger painting. So use the artist for your inspiration and, um, and play with whatever's there. Eyedroppers. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, they're for I got pipettes, but I was thinking eyedropper. That's essentially what I was trying to remember. Trying to think of Christina. In my head, I've got 20 rabbit trails going. And so sometimes the words just, you know, the exact words get away. You can say it for a minute, baby, but we're going to be gluing. You're going to have to move in a minute. Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's pick a couple more here. So, um, yeah, just uh, maybe these are little finger painted people, little beach, you know, on the beach there. Um, and then here's where the, uh, one of them, they started coming apart where I had glued the spines to get, I mean, the uh, covers together. And so I went in backing with some packing tape to reinforce it. There's some more. Um, this is some of my hand carved little peapod stamps. And... Uh, so I'm trying to inspire you by flipping through here to, sh to get you inspired to try to do your own magazine playground. But look how much stuff there is in here still to use. Um, here's bearded irises. So we called this one the meeting of the beards. Again, you know, just use the colors for your inspiration. Here I showed you how to make easy drawn cactuses. We just drew these in just in a couple of minutes because cactuses are really easy to do. So, and then use some, um, I don't know if it was Posca or gel pen. You don't have any magazines? I'm sure you can find them at uh, libraries, throw them away. You know, you can find them all over. Yeah, magazines are pretty easy to come by. I mean, unless you live out in the desert or something. <laughs> you can find, they're not hard to find. Again, I, these are all a little painted. Again, I'll just come in here with a little bit just, you know, just to show you. You know, a little swirl coming around this way. This one can come around over here. Just with a little finger painting. Thank you, Bacola. There's Antonia's uh, workshop that Eileen has been promoting and taking, by the way. She did sign up. I think he has two classes. I've not gone look at the classes yet. I'll go look at them. Let's see what time is it here. Uh, 2 18. Let me, let me make a note of that. Two, um, two hours, 18 minutes in for Antonio's link. So I can go and look that up. I haven't looked at his classes either, Pacola. All right, let me dry that real quick so I don't glue these pages together. <laughs> then the little wheats are just hand-drawn in there. Some little wheat things here. All right, let's see what else we got. 
some more. Little, just finger painting. This is just scraping your finger paint in there. This one looks like some inks. Oh, let's see here. And again, you kind of want to work front to back and back to front so you don't warp your spine. But you can just go in here and play color swatches, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. There's there. Again, painted with finger paint. This was there. This little bit here. And then all the rest of this is paint. It is fun. It is a lot of fun. But we have, you know, we have we do so many projects, it's hard to get back to all of them all the time. Uh, so just kind of flipping through. There's a lighter color one. Um, let me just flip through here. But you know, there's hundreds of pages in here. You can splatter. You know, this has got some ink splatters on here. I wonder how magic they would. I would think they would work. Yeah, Nat Geo's. But one of the nice things about cutting them in half is you're not married to an image that you see fully. Like you'll see a half of an image, an image cut in half. Or so you're not married to the actual image that's there. You want to, you want to change it. You know, sometimes if you have a full on image, you want to, oh, I got to keep that, you know. Oh, I got a little glue there. Um, and if you have them cut in half, you're less likely to be precious with the images. You'll be more apt to play with them. Okay, so now the only thing I need to do real quick, which I haven't done yet, is pick out some scrapbook paper for the uh, cover and the spine. All right, let me move these paints out of the way. Again, ideally, you should be scraping these in your journals to save it. Uh, let me see. Let me go down here and look. Uh, hang on. I like this. I bought these separately. I don't know if I have enough. Let me see if I have enough of this. If I don't. Okay, so these were on sale at Hobby Lobby. These were on sale at Hobby Lobby for four for a dollar. So I got these four. Oh, I got to get up, up off the floor. I got these four papers. I got this map one, which I could use the some of my, um, what do you call it? Uh, that other paper that I bought, the eight by eights. But these, these are longer, so these will be um, eight and a half by 11 or eight by 10. It'll be better for a longer journal. So I got the I got three of these and one of these and my four for a dollar. So I think I'm going to use these. It's not heavy cardstock. You could use heavier cardstock would be make your book a little more stable. But just we're going to go. With, I'm going to roll with this. All right, let me move my heat gun out of the way. All right, let's move the journal. So I've got my three journals. I've got my three. I mean magazines. I've got my three magazines cut in half again. I can't repeat this enough. If you can take your magazines to an office supply, Staples, UPS store, whatever kind of wherever they do binding, any place that does binding will have a cutter and they'll cut them in half for you. They should if they're nice or, you know, who knows these days, you know. Oh, yeah, you got to stay outside. Oh, we'll cut it. Throw it, slide it under the door. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't tried, gone to get one cut so lately. So I cut mine myself, but they are not perfect. They're different sizes. See that back one's a little bigger. Not that big. There you go. They're different sizes. I don't really care if that's the case, but you might. So if you want them perfectly lined up, you know, they'll line up this way. But if you want them perfectly lined up on the top, the bottom, if you, you know, set them all down, they're going to be perfectly lined up on the bottom, right? But, you know, if you cut them in half, they're not, it's probably not going to be perfect. Okay. So now I've got, and I've also staggered them, that no two are next to each other. So it's going to be different things are going to uh, be in different parts of the book. So what you're going to want to do is, 
uh, get to know. Yeah, I don't know what to, Julie's talking about. But yeah, everybody should be really friendly to newbies. So don't, you know, feel free. If you're a lurker, feel free to come in. Let me move some of these paints so I have a little more room. If you're a lurker, please feel comfortable and free to come in and chat. Everybody will be nice to you. If they're not, then we'll get rid of them. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. We have over 200 people here. So I appreciate all the lurkers. I'm glad to have lurkers as well as chatters. We have a combo. We have a combo. Hi, Patricia. Anybody else? Karen M. Anybody else I miss? I, drawing art, uh, candy. Uh, anybody else I miss coming in? I'm not purposely missing you, but I do have to kind of look away <laughs> from the chat. I try to balance looking at the chat and going back and forth. And uh, so, oh, okay. Thank you, to Julie. And uh, my mods have total control over the chat. So what they say goes. So they don't have to ask my permission for anything, you know. So if um, you get kicked, you know, hopefully it'll just be a timeout. But if you're a troll, bye-bye. All right, so I'm going to show you what to do here. So you've got all these, you know, kept the covers on. And what I do is I'll start with the back ones. And then the next one, I'm going to flip these over. So here's the next one. These two are going to be glued together. Then this one's going to get glued to this one. Then this one's going to get glued to that one, etc. Okay? All right. So what I usually do is take the first two that I'm going to glue together. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And I, this is just how I do it. If you want to be neater, you go ahead. I'm going to have to open up another bottle. I got one at the ready. So I put a lot, and if any of it's, if it's too much, I'll just go to the next one that I'm going to glue. I put a lot of Eileen's tacky, and I just start smearing it around. And I get all the way to the edge. If you're worried about gluing your edges together, which might be a concern, I'm, I'm trying to, go out to the edge. So I'm kind of pulling out like this. I'm pulling out to the edge. I'm not coming in and, and grabbing those edges because that could very well get glue on your edges. You don't want to do that. So if you really want to be extra careful, you'll put some wax paper behind the covers so you're not gluing things together. And I, I don't just do one side. I do both sides. I'm going to need more. Um, I do both sides. You would think that one side would be enough, but it you really, if you really want it, oh, it's not going to stand up there. You want to uh, put a good thick coat. Uh, I imagine your Elmer school glue would work as well, but you really want it to stand overnight with magazine. I mean, with books on top of it, so that it thoroughly dries. I'm not going to do that, but I will go ahead and let it dry overnight after we're done. But you know. I, I want to show you as much as possible. Okay, so and then have a baby wipe, which I don't have handy. But I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm also going to do add extra packing tape and stuff, so you'll see. All right, so now I've got these two thoroughly glued. Now I'm going to match these up. And again, this is the one that the back one has, is a little taller than the others it's okay for me i might let leave a little bit more room at the bottom but it doesn't you know it doesn't bother me to have one just a little bigger but it's going to be easier to wrap your packing tape if you do have them if you do have them equal but again if you cut it yourself i'm going to take my baby wipe and get on the excess glue there because i don't want to glue these pages together okay so there's any excess glue seeping out Wipe it with a baby wipe. Just kind of check it. Okay, so there's those two. All right, so I'm going to keep doing this all, all through the, um, all of the pages, or all the covers. Okay, this one's almost done. Almost done. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm standing it on end in the cap. If you can buy these uh, Eileen Tacky glues with these caps on them, they're made for you to stand them on in like this. They're made for that, but not all of them have that. So if you buy one, like this one's almost done. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to use the rest of this jar here. Keep this. Keep this so that you can stand your next one on end if you have to buy one that doesn't have it. All right, so now I'm going to just 
again, being careful to kind of go off the edge. Whoops. Being careful to go off the edge and not like bring the glue to the inside because you'll, uh, gl you'll glue your pages together. All right. All right. I'm not looking at chat off as often as I usually do. All right. So there's that one. Now go over here to this one. And you just smear it out with your finger. And uh, one of the nice things about Eileen's glue, I have a baby wipe here to clean my hands. But you can roll this up and it'll it'll just uh, peel up on your fingers. All right, so there we go. Got the second one done. Again, I'm going to line this up as best I can. Okay, especially on the spine. You especially want to line up. You can feel it, okay? Then take your baby wipe. Make sure you don't have any excess glue coming out anywhere, okay? All right, so now we got three glued together. Uh, this makes me miss your magazine journal. I had to put most of my art seven stars. Oh, Karen. Oh, okay. Okay, now I think we're almost done with this jar here. I'll have to open another one. I'm getting every drop out of it I can. Okay, let's go to this side here. And I'll open up another one. This one's been standing on end, so I think I've got most all this out. But okay, and again, I'll throw this away and get as much out of the cap as I can, and then that'll go in the trash too. But I'm keeping this part, the standing part. All right, so let's do this next one, just smearing it out. And it's kind of like when you collage. When you collage, you need to put the glue on your base and on the back of the collage piece you're doing. You wouldn't think you would need to. You put a whole bunch of glue on one side, you'd think you could just slap your collage thing down. You can. It'll glue, but it'll wrinkle. I think one of the tricks to not having your collage elements wrinkle is putting the glue on both sides. And, of course, if I use matte medium, then I also put it over the top. And then I take a card and smash it all down with the card. All right, so now let's put this fourth one on. Again, I'm kind of feeling all around the edges. I don't care if it's perfect. It won't be because I didn't cut it perfectly. But then take your baby wipe. Make sure there's no glue oozing out. Okay, so now we have four. See how the back one's bigger because I didn't cut it perfect? So if you want yours cut perfect, you need to take it somewhere. All right, now I'm going to get another jar here. I think it might be open. Let's see. Let's take the lid off. No, nope, it's brand new. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze some out. On both sides. Put this back on for a minute so I can stand it up inside the thing. Keep this somewhere. i got a place for those kind of things. All right. <clears throat> Okay, everything going okay? I'm not I'm sure I'm missing saying a good morning to people. So maybe just a touch more right in here. Getting there. Getting there. Oh, and while I'm Janet, while I'm staring at Javier, <laughs> if you're here, I still didn't see if you said who you're gonna have your get as your guest. Every time I ask you, then I look away from chat, and then I miss your answer. Did you say um, if you're if you said if your guest is coming on today? Janet streams at one and um, one Eastern. It's eleven now. She comes on a couple hours. I'll probably be here about another hour, at least till about five till twelve or something. Uh, oh, I gotta go put some mail in the mailbox. Dang it! I, I, let me glue these all together, and I've got to go run out and put something in the mailbox. I forgot. I got to do that before my mailman comes. He probably won't come till 12 or 1, between 12 and 1, but I, I don't want to miss getting my bills in the mail. Um, 
Am I, is my chat moving? Let me do a test. It looks like it hasn't moved in five minutes. Am I still here, guys? Hopefully. It looks like I'm still moving, but my chat's not moving. Oh, there it goes. Okay, thanks, guys. Oh, I can tell you? Okay, so Janet, she said, go ahead. So Janet, thank you, Desert Nana, and hi, by the way. Hi, Scrap Girl 12. Janet is having a, a, on her channel at one, Lena is going to be, Lena is going to be on Janet's show at one. So if y'all know our Lena, who is a hoot, she's out of Denmark. Lena is a freaking hoot. <laughs> so she's going to be Janet's guest today on her show since we're figuring out stream yard guesting <laughs> um well, i hear a car i hope it's not the mailman i gotta as soon as i stick these two together guys i gotta run out to the mailbox real quick i have to run out there real quick and get my bills in the mail <laughs> all right so yeah janet is having lena on to her show today so I'm trying to just kind of pull it out to the edge, and I don't want to get it over the edge. Again, if we get it too far over the edge, we're going to glue our books together. I mean, all the pages. All right. All right, so there we go. And then I'm going to show you how to tape it and decorate it and all that in just a minute. Okay, so I've got them all glued together. Six of them. Three magazines cut in half. All right, so I'm going to let this sit for just a minute. Get my... Okay, give me just a minute, guys, to run out to the mailbox. All right, I'm going to close the doors so the cats don't get off on my table. Okay, I'm back. Oh, I gotta catch my breath. Uh, oh, what's wrong? I'm gonna. Is he all right, Janet? I just saw Janet and you. I just saw what y'all said. I hope he's okay. Really tall paths. Let me catch my breath here. Ran down the stairs, out to the street, back up. Okay, put this out of the way. All righty. So, she might have already, I don't know if she's already left. Hi, Kenneth. Debbie. Said hi to Tracy, Nancy. I'm probably missing people. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We're making our little... 
magazine journal. All right, so now the next thing you can do. Now, if you set it overnight, if you leave that overnight, this, you know, you probably don't need to tape every one, but it's a good idea. And you do want to tape the spine. But if you're, you know, if you really are wanting to make sure everything is together, you can at least tape. Let me just do one. I don't know if I want to take the time to do all of them because I want to get onto the cover. And see, I can see where I've kind of got a couple, little bit of glue. I want to make sure that the glue is not gluing pages together. Okay. So let's go to the spine here or to the uh, first two pages where they've, I've glued them together. Let's see here. Okay, so I think this is it. So I've got a little glue on the edge there. Let's go to the getting to the uh, covers. Okay, here they are. Okay, see, I got a little glue there. You got to be careful. All right, so these two are glued together. This is the first page and, and then the second signature. So if you really want to secure your book, then take some packing tape and go all the way around, taping, taping both the pages together. So you want to kind of lift it up here so it's all nice and flat and fold it over. And so you can tape. And then, of course, there's overhang. And just cut off the overhang. So all your all your book, all your book, and take your time with this. I don't I don't I don't even really want to hurry this part because you really want it to be as flat and secure as you can possibly get it. Okay. So you want to do this to all your your all your covers. Any place there's a cover. If you want it really extra good, you can even put some on the edge. Okay, so you've got extra security. So even though the glue, which mine's not glued tight yet, see, because it's not, uh, I haven't left it out over, I mean, I haven't put it under books and left it over. And I'm going to put a little bit more glue here between these two because I'm getting ready to uh, tape all that together too. So I will go back and uh, let me get a. I will go back and tape with packing tape. You could use masking tape. It's just not as sturdy. Even duct tape. Duct tape would be good too. To glue all your, all your, um, what do you call it? There's a little piece of the tape there still. Glue all your, uh, I mean, tape all your pages. Covers. Glue all your covers together. Okay, then you want to, again, you want to put heavy books on this overnight. You really do, because they're going to shift if you don't. Okay, so let's just say this is sat overnight in your case. You want to let it set overnight before you start playing with the covers and all that. I would just recommend. But I'm going to now, I'm going to tape, I'll start with the middle of the book. I'm going to pull it off the edge here and wrap as tight as I can as tight as I can, wrap that with packing tape, okay, all the way around. This is going to be covered. So I'm going to do that three times, get it, you know, pretty close to the edge here. Pull, I'm going to pull it to the edge so I can pull down. I'm going to pull down real tight. So I've got two pieces there. Okay, let's do this over here. Again, I'm pulling down as tight as I can to wrap that, wrap that just as tight as I can. Okay, so I got it all packing tape. But if you really want to stabilize the inside so that nothing pulls out, because pages will pull out if you know as you're working in it, open and closing, open and closing it. And you could see in this one where there's some pages that I had to add extra tape because it started coming apart. So that might happen, and it's going to depend on how sturdy your magazine, what kind of magazine you got too. 
Uh, if you if you're looking at a magazine and I don't know flower magazine, gardening magazine, and you open it up and you the pages are already starting to fall out, you probably don't want to use that. Okay, these Somerset magazines are pretty sturdy, and I also don't recommend fashion magazines because the paper is so thin. So now I've got three pieces of packing tape wrapped on that spine. Now all I have left to do now is to glue the cover glue covers on. Okay, so. Um, I think I probably used, I'm not sure, this paper's pretty thick. This paper that I used here is pretty thick. And I, I might have used um, Eileen's tacky glue on it. But if your paper's pretty thin, like this paper's pretty thin, I'm not even sure. I, I, I'm going to use it, but I'm against my better judgment. I'm going to use this thinking it may be too, um, it may be a little thin, but I'm going to use it. But I'm going to, what I'm going to do is glue stick it. All right, so I'm going to first match up my cover here exactly where I want it. And I'm going to wrap any excess, any excess paper that I have. I am going to try to at least put two layers on the spine. I'm going to try to put at least two extra layers. Like this side will wrap all the way around. Then the back cover will wrap this way. So I should probably do the back. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to wrap the spine a third time. Okay, so... Um, the easiest way I think to measure is to put it on this side's not going to matter so much. I'll have to cut a little off there, but uh, because it's going to have wraps, but just kind of hold it as steady as you can and just kind of crease it. Now, if you still have a little excess cut, you know, after you're done, you can always go back in here with an X-Acto knife or, or, I mean, a scissors and trim it. Or the way I like to do it is take an old um, emery board. I have emery boards that are made just for distressing. And you can do this. Now, this, uh, this one's already been, I've already inked it. But you can take, I'm going to go ahead and do it so you can see. But after you put your paper on, you can go around the edges and this will help bind the glue to the spot to the paper. If you do this, it kind of does something. It kind of melts your paper into the card, you know, the cover. And uh, so you can do that to kind of pull it all together. I would recommend you wait, you know, till it's dry, till the glue is dry, because you can tear it. You'll, you know, you can tear the wet paper. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, let's go ahead and trim this. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. And if you want to get it real exact, get your paper trimmer out. Again, I'm probably going to ink. I'm going to distress the edges and then ink the edges so it's not as bad. You know, it's not as necessary to me. But then I'm going to go over here and I want to see how much I want to cut off of here. I'm just going to cut that little extra. Yeah, maybe I'll just go ahead and glue it. Let's go ahead and glue it. All right, so I'm going to put, again, with the glue, put it on here and here, okay? So let's see. I might need to get another glue stick out. All right, so I'm going right over the tape. I'm going right over everything. Be careful. Like, yeah, okay, this one's almost. Let me get another one. That one's empty. I've got a little one here, and I'll go get another big one. I have another uh, in the drawer. Okay, uh, be careful not to get it over the edge because... And if you do, and some of these pages will have some glue on them, you're going to get some glue on them. But as long as you're careful, go in between your pages and kind of do this if they're stuck together and kind of be careful about it. Uh, you can get them apart. Again, see, I'm having to bend the spine to get the glue on here. You don't, you really want to wait till overnight to do this part. You really want to wait till overnight. Okay, so now I'm going to glue, put glue on here. I'm going to get another glue stick. Okay, and I'm not looking at chat, so I hope everybody's still with the tour. <laughs> All right, let me get another glue stick out. Hang on. <clears throat> and try to get to the edge. A, a good thing to do is if you have you know, some scrap paper so you can get all the way to the edge and not get it on your desk, but, you know. All right, so let's go ahead and get this on here as straight as possible. Okay, and you can take a card 
and like really mash it down. And I'm going to wrap the spine all the way around because I'm going to do the other paper the other way. And then after I do the second paper on the back and wrap it all the way around, then I'm going to take this paper and make a spine, a, a piece for the spine. So actually there's going to be three pieces of paper, three pieces of paper on the spine. And really cardstock ideally, but I'm using paper and later I'll probably go, I oh, should have used you should have used a uh, cardstock, but I really like this paper. <laughs> so I'm going to use it. Okay, so there we go. Now, let's see how, what do I want on the back? Let's see this. I think I want this part here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I like that right there. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this section. All right, so I'm lining it up, folding it over. Making a making a crease where to cut it. Save these. These are too pretty to throw away. All right. So again, let me go over here. Do the same thing. Well. Okay, Pacola. Pacola goes, this is a good time to go get some tea. <laughs> Putting a real thick coat of the glue stick. And on the spine. And on the paper here. Don't be skimpy on the glue. Try to cover every smidgen of the paper because otherwise you can get wrinkles. You'll get wrinkles where there's no glue. And try not to have any like excess bump, lumpy bits come off because that'll show through. All right, so now let's go up here. Wrap it really well. I'm going to wrap it all the way back over to the front. Okay. All right. Someone texted me. Or is that mom and Denise talking to each other? Okay. Could use a little bit more. All right. The edge right there needs a little trim. A little bit more glue right there. Okay. Same thing over here. I could do a little trim. Again, I really shouldn't be doing this until the book has sat overnight so that all these signatures are really mashed in, down and together really, really well. All right, so now what I want to do is take this paper and find a part that I like. I kind of like these worlds here. So what I'm going to do, and I want a pretty big section. So I'm going to... Can I make a dent there, fold it so I know how to, where to cut it. Because I want a big wrap. And then you can also put packing tape on top of this, if you want, on the spine. Or the whole thing, actually. You could packing tape the whole thing. Okay, so what this is going to do now is, let's see exactly where I want it. Kind of guesstimate here. I don't want to cover quite that much up. So I'm going to make it just a little small. I'm going to cut just a little bit more off here. I don't want to cover up so much of this paper. But I want to reinforce the spine. Okay, so back to the glue stick. Hi, Dot. Welcome back. So I hope everybody enjoyed seeing all those journal journals that I showed this morning. Thank you, Katie, for sending them. 
and uh, we did our little test in them. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly how far up I want this. I'll leave a little extra space and I can put the glue right up to the edge. Okay. Just gives it more stability. Okay, I've got it a little crooked. Okay, now let's go here on the back. So you've got three layers of paper on the spine. Okay, and I'll know the world here on the front is the front. Now, if there's anything hanging over, I still got a little piece of tape over there. Let me get some small scissors. Oops. A little piece of that packing tape hanging out from where I glue the two together. Once I can open it up and get in there, um, I can trim it better. So there we go. So you can see how and if you want this extra sturdy then wrap wrap uh do some uh, packing tape around here or if it starts to come off or it starts to get worn or it doesn't seem like your spine's going to hold up packing tape he's already got packing tape once you've already got one layer of packing tape uh around the spine but if you want to really protect it you could cover the whole thing with packing tape the whole thing have it shiny and protected but I just kind of like the way it looks like this you know yeah you like that curly yeah and again there's a little bit up here where I can do a little bit more extra glue or a little bit extra trim but what I like to do to instead of trying to trim that edge what you could do is I'll take I have a rougher one somewhere I have I buy these um uh, what do you call it? Uh, emery boards that are rough. This one's not the rough, really rough, rough one. Rough, rough. It's not the rough, rough. But you want the real, the ones that are really made for acrylic nails. The kind you don't, you don't really want to use on your nails, <laughs> your real nails, um, because they're, it's almost like a sandpaper, an extra thick sandpaper. Bye, Teresa. Anybody else coming and going? Thanks for being here. Okay, so. You can take your emery board and you can, now I've got to put it on the edge because I don't have the room to, to do this, but you can take the emery board. I wish I could, here, I oh, know what, let me prop it up on this one. So you can take the emery board and do this. And I don't know if you can see it, but the little bit of paper that didn't get exactly on the edge, you're, you're uh, shaving it off. You're shaving off. And now your two paper and your, your cover and your papers are exact. You can't even feel uh, an edge. You have, you've melded them together. So you want to do that. Don't do it on the spine side, but you want to do this all the way around. All the way around your front and back cover. And all the paper, the paper will just be melded together with your cover. I hope that's making sense as to why we're doing that. It's just, it's just like now it's one piece of paper. There's no, there's no edge. And if you miss any little glue, then you can go back and, and fix that. You see how that worked? See how perfectly that is when you sand it? And you can use sandpaper too. If you're, you know, if you don't have emery, you can just use sandpaper like, you know. But, um, and then if you don't like the little white edge showing, you can ink it. You know, so... Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around. I need to trim a little bit on the spine there where I didn't quite get the paper lined up. All right, let's turn it over and do the other side. Don't go up and down. Don't go like this up and down because then you're going to be pulling the paper up. I'm only going, I'm only going one way. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm only going down. I'm not rubbing it up and down now you can go a little bit sideways 
but don't go pull it back up. You'll be pulling your paper right back off. Okay, so there is your magazine journal. There is your mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground, or as we call it, your MMMICPP. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, yeah. So, and then, but when you start playing in it, you can, I've, I've, um, like with the dry paint, not wet, just barely dry paint with the makeup wedge, got a little bit of black paint and I inked all the edges, but you got to make sure you don't let it all dry together. And you can also go back over this with gold rub on. Let's see if I can put my hands on some. Let's see. Let's see. This one might be a too yellow, but let's see. You know, if any of y'all have any of these old rub ons, we I have newer ones too, but these always work really well. So um, just whatever kind of rub ons. You have, you can go in here with this wax-based rub-on stuff, and you can go in here and you can add a little bit of gold uh, shimmer, a little bit of gold shimmer to your journal if you so desire. If you um, cut it yourself, then this is going to make all the little uh, imper imperfections show up. So, um, but I'm just, I just want to show it to you so you know how to do it and just rub over the black and you can see you're going to make a nice, pretty gold edge, but this is, you know, it's not meant to be, this isn't meant to be like museum quality, <laughs> a museum quality. This is to play. This is to play in, right? So again, you know, uh, let's, let, I'll do a couple more pages in here. I don't really want to do this because I haven't finished. It's not dry. It really needs to set up so all the covers dry together. And I also want to tape. I want to uh, packing tape all the covers to each other so it's extra sturdy. If I start opening it and playing in it, it's going to jack it up. So I don't want to. Uh, I'll leave it here so you can look at it. But we're going to play in this one. So let me just find a couple pages to do. For a few minutes before we go, um, and uh, let's see, here's some, I think I can use up some of that, uh, I want to find something I can use up these colors in, because I have them, you know, out, oh wait, let me, oh, no, I don't want to get it on there, I'm already going to mess up my new one, let's get some wax paper to put between the pages. Because you'll you'll glue them together if you're not careful. I'm telling you, especially if you're finger painting, you want this to be. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to glue your pages together. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, oh, there is a link to the. Okay, what this time is this? This is three o two. I'm writing down this. <laughs> I need to figure out how to do the time stamping in the description box because it can't be hard. Um, so that is the, I'm making a note and I, so I can put time stamps in the description box. Okay. All right. So now, <laughs> now I'm going to go in here and just put, start with some, I think I want some black in this too, because we got some black there. I want a little bit of black here. So I'm going to start, though, with the brown color. And see how you can, like, meld, you know, meld all these images in, meld them in with paint. And it's just so fun. It's just free. Nothing, you don't have to worry about being exact. I'll, I'll try to leave that quote there. And uh, you don't have to worry about it being exact. 
and really the more non-exact it is, the, the more you're going to like it. Because if you try to get it too fussy, you do the fussy uh, kind of journal in, a, in another journal. <laughs> Let this be the one where you don't care. You just throw your paint in. You're not going to worry about it. You're not going to care if it's, you know, whatever. This is this make this your playground. You have to have at least one of these kind of journals where you're just getting ideas. You're you just want to, you know, play in it and not be fussy about it. Okay. You're doing it good, Ashley. Good. All right. So now I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to use up the rest of this paint that we used on the other page. And I'm just going to kind of. And if you get something where you don't want it while the paint's wet, you know, this is shiny magazine page or, pages. So you can, you know, wipe away for a while until it dries. You know, once it's dry, you're not wiping anything away. But, you know, <clears throat> maybe a little less right there. On the, I want it on the quote. But let's go around this edge here. Let's kind of cover up the edge. Maybe give the quote a little more prominent um, border. Okay, and then maybe over here, maybe there needs some green. Maybe around this little fern thing. Just have a little bit of it showing through. I don't want any blue up there and uh, this little dog down here I think I'll leave the little dog let's put a little more green down here maybe there's some see look I just pulled that page out see I yanked it and I pulled it out so we'll have to just tape it in that'll happen I'm telling you it will happen you will have some pages come out depending on how much you use the book if you use the book a whole lot and, and you're pulling on it you're going to get pages come out, but I'll just tape it in. So you got to just be willing to let, it, let that happen sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to go across here just a little bit. Go across here. Just have a little green kind of coming across there, across the bottom. Maybe a little bit in these little trees right there coming across over here. Like that, we could even have, let's see, let's maybe water down the rest of that green. Where's my water? Let's water. I don't want it to get it in the black. So let me just put a little water there. And let me get a fluffy brush. Do I have a fluffy brush handy? Let's reach over. Okay, and I don't want it on his face, so I'll just take my baby wipe and wipe it off his face. Let's move this. There we go. Now let's dry it, and then I'll then I'll tape it back in. <laughs> uh, it is fun. It is. Hi, G again. All right, let's see. Get my heat gun. Let's dry this. And splatters take a minute. You think they're dry and they're not. And, you know, I'm, I finger painted it on pretty thick, you know, so it can take a minute to dry. We'll do a little bit more doodles on here. Thanks, everybody that's here and workers. And if, if you don't do this project exactly, you know, if you've already got a journal that you're working in with some collage elements, or even if you're 
doing something like this little Arteza one where you've glued some stuff down. You can still essentially do the same type of thing with your, um, like here, for example, these are, there's nothing else done on this page except glued down papers and, and images. Now I can go in here and finger paint and do the same thing that you just saw me do here, here with different colors. Okay, so you can do you can do all kinds of things in just a regular journal. It doesn't have to be a magazine journal. I understand not everybody's going to like to do a magazine journal. You like working on your, you know, stiffer pages in a in a you know different kind of journal, like maybe one of the ones we showed those kind. And then you can go in here and you know take your finger painting and you can blend in here some clouds coming right across here you can do you can go back in and do this kind of stuff on top of the in this kind of book it doesn't have to be in a magazine journal it can be doing the same type of thing it can be the same type of thing that we're doing here but in another kind of book all right so now this came apart so what i'm going to do is I'm just going to take, I'll just take some, because it's sitting here, I'd probably just take some, uh, what do you call it, tape, uh, scotch tape, but I'm going to go ahead and do masking tape, so like that, and I'm going to get it right in the crack there, and glue that back in, there we go, so it's glued back in, <laughs> with some packing tape. And uh, now you can take like your pastas or, you know, um, whatever pens will work on top of uh, on top of acrylic paint. All right, so look at here. See these little wavy lines that were there? Well, you could just kind of let's just extend them. Well, maybe maybe these are like little thin little branches. You just kind of drag your pasta up and extend them. So, you know, you can doodle, you can, you know, if you like, like Janet loves to zentangle, you can zentangle, you know, um, try zentangling with a paint pen. Just, you know, try different things, try different materials. So there's just so much you can do in a, in a book that you're not worried about. You know, let's maybe we can put some little, let's put some little glasses on here. <laughs> uh, and then maybe the little dog over here. Let's get a, uh, I don't know where my black Posca is. Let me get one up here. Well, I have one here somewhere. It's a pink pencil or Posca. Well, let me just get another pen for now. Just because I want to put, put some little. So anyway, you can just play and, you know, if you want this to extend up, a, a big pen will work on almost anything. So if you don't know what to use on acrylic paint, you can always use big pens and they come in other colors. You know, we just usually like to use black because it, uh, especially for writing, you know, but there's other colors of big pens. Gotta let it dry though, because they can smear until they dry. Let's make these two a little bigger. You can go around these with your Posca. You know, outline them. Outline them with your Posca. And just doodle and write and play and you know, because a bick will go over anything. You know, maybe he needs, maybe he needs a body. And he's saying, we, let's go ahead and outline the we. 
<laughs> but anyway, so you can see how you can just play in your little book. Do whatever. Do whatever. So we've got any questions or anything? Or is there anything else I've shown or that you want to see again before we leave? Um, again, we've got our journal that we put together today. Come in the little trim right there. <laughs> And uh, you could always, again, put extra packing tape on the spine, but let it put a, put some heavy books on it overnight. Let that glue really, really take hold. Let it really take hold. Oh, I did want to mention, and so Katie is the one that sent me four of those journals we showed this morning. Katie in Alabama. Thank you so much, Katie. Uh, I also want to let y'all know that Shannon Green has started making videos again. So if y'all know, remember Shannon Green from way back who makes all kinds of junk journals and um, she uses magazine images. I don't think she's ever made a magazine journal, but she makes all kinds of journals and using old magazines. Hers, does anybody remember? It's not Big Boy. What's her journal? What was her big journal called? The Big Mama Jamba Journal that she did with magazine images. What was it called? Does anybody remember? It's been so many years, I just don't remember. But anyway, Shan yeah, Shannon Green. Hi, Zippy the Unicorn. <laughs> wait, wait for it. <laughs> Hi, Zippy. Uh, <laughs> Zippy the Unicorn, yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to have Zippy the Unicorn on my show. Now that I've figured out at least a decent StreamYard stream, at least a decent StreamYard stream now was like that first four or five days, Janet and I struggled. Well, we finally figured out, thank you, Pacola, that we have to hardwire and not use Wi-Fi. Turn off the Wi-Fi and hardwire, and we got a good, I think this is fairly good quality. We only get 720. Uh, you don't get 1080p on StreamYard, but... We can have guests. So I'm going to have Zippy the Unicorn. Would y'all like to have Zippy the Unicorn? Oh, my gosh. If y'all have never seen Zippy the Unicorn, go. And I'm just, and he's, Zippy's been on different uh, shows, but I just know Zippy from Doug to Naples. <laughs> Doug to Naples. If you've never seen Zippy the Unicorn, you're missing out. And if you if you do see that I'm streaming with Zippy, I'm going to try to set up something. Maybe this week if Zippy has a free night or whatever. Zippy is a hoot. I'm not even going to know what to say to Zippy. <laughs> this quality is not sufficient. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Zippy. I know. I know better. I know better. But anyway, but Zippy's hilarious. Oh, let's put, let's put Zippy the unicorn in space here. I need to cut that little tag off. There we go. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, let's see. Yes, Pacola figured it out. Yeah, so that's what we uh, that's what we uh, are doing uh, now. Janet and I'm going to see what, how her quality is today. Janet is trying hers out on Firefox, and I've just been on Chrome. But if Janet seems to be getting better quality on Firefox, I will stream on Firefox. We'll make Zippy happy. <laughs> Ask him about unicorn life. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I do want to have Zippy on. I have, I have a list of people I want to have on. But I said, Zippy, I need to have you on at some point. He goes, well, I want you to, I want to be the first one, your first guest, well, other than Janet, because we tested the stream, but Zippy goes, I want to be the first one on your, your uh, guest on your show, because it's all downhill after that. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, you have a tag. You've been tagged, Zippy. <laughs> Made a little rainbow coming out the butt. <laughs> Y'all seen those, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah. So thanks for popping in. And Big Bertha, that's the name of Shannon Green's book, Kim. Thank you. 
Yeah, Shannon Green's journal is called Big Bertha. <laughs> and ours, ours are called the mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground. Or I or, or at for short, MMMICPP. That's what these journals are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make the tag a rainbow. Oh, should we do it right now? Okay, let's see. All right, hang on, guys. Let's see. This this show is not for children. Let's see. We need a. I get. A, I'll get some Posca paint pens. Let's see. We get a blue. I'm gonna try to match this up. A lime green, kind of a bright green, a pink, and a yellow. Oh, I'm kind of a what color yellow? Okay, so let's see if we can paint this tag. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, we'll just uh, we'll just cut it off. All right, let's see. Yeah, we're doing this for you, Zippy. And I'll do the other side too. So Zippy can be coming and going. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got my eyes are watering now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> now Zippy won't want to come on my show. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Zippy! <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, guys, I got to go. Did my ha 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 not go through? I don't know why. Where's my ha 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 in chat? Didn't it go through? New comments. Let's see. Did it go through? There it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i am gonna head out thanks for being if you missed this beginning of the show where i showed five different journals and the uh pin qualities of each or if you missed us making um making this one then go back again the the stream is three and a half hours it can take an hour two hours or so for the full video at chat and video to fully render and be on YouTube. So if you go over to YouTube and you only see an hour, it's not fully rendered yet. So give it a couple of hours, uh, but we'll be at Janet's anyway, but give it a couple hours for, um, for it to fully render. <laughs> uh, thanks, Julie. And I hope Brad's going to be okay. Uh, message me, Julie, message me. Bye, Zippy. Thank you for stopping in. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a great uh, afternoon, and we'll see you all again. Zippy, uh, message me when you're available. <laughs> Let me know when you're available. Bye, guys. <laughs>